I just go to it and just put it in for me. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, let us know in the comments, once we're set up here, if the volume is good. We um, are just testing this out, uh, capital D and my cousin, Kieran, formerly known as the Crooked Genius, doing a podcast in the crib. <clears throat> Say what up, Kiro. What up? Yeah, first podcast, Alex really went all out with... I mean, if you could see what I'm looking at right now, it's a lot of equipment. It is pretty dope. It's super dope. If anybody wants podcasting gear, um, if you guys want podcasting gear, go to Amazon. Check out the check out the Logitech Pro. What oh, we're clipping here on some sound. Yo yo, Kim, take me down on the sound here. Hello? Hello. Just let us know how the sound's going. I'm just uh, getting some internet connected here. Capital D, the Pyramid Podcast in Pods We Trust. This is the first podcast we're having. It's in my house. We're currently uh, building a studio. It's under construction in my <clears throat> in an undisclosed location. I was going to say where it was, but I'm not going to tell you. Fuck you. Give the exact address. There was your first swear, by the way. Oh, <laughs> it's all good. It's the first one. I don't think we're going to have any specific topics or anything this evening. We're kind of making sure yeah. all the all the equipment's sorted out. Making sure it works. Ah, oh, tired. It's a text me the fucking password. It's, a... it's all good, man. I don't know if you need that. Um, if anyone watching, I don't know if you can hear this cat or not. Yeah, sorry about the cat. Psst. Get out of here, cow. Uh, yeah, cars might be driving by. Cat might be making noise. It is what it is. Um, we're here. We're doing it. Got a bunch of merchandise on the way to have a show. January 24th, opening up for Tony Yayo. Uh, have a shitload of merchandise there. If you guys need tickets, they're 35 bucks. Let me know. I'm just having it on Facebook. It's, it's not a huge deal. What? The password. Sorry, dude. I'm, it's so it's such a long fucking stupid password, man. I don't know why she made it so fucking long. Sorry, or I don't mean to shit talk you. Yeah, I don't know. It's all good. Can you still go on the internet? Yeah. Yep. It's not gonna like charge you or nothing. No. Nope. Yes. Yeah, so if you guys are watching and you're in the comments, say what's up. Um, even if nobody watches this while we're live, um, we just want to say thank you guys for viewing the video after. Um, I uh, labeled the YouTube channel a podcast channel now. We're still going to be putting uh, music videos, music. Um, psst, psst. Sorry, I'm going to have to pee him out of this fucking shit every now and then. I'm sorry. I locked him in the bathroom and he was fucking crying so loud I couldn't fucking, we couldn't do this because I have a one bedroom house, so fucking tiny, it was built in 1912. Undisclosed location. Undisclosed location, all of you guys out there, actually there's something else I need to talk about that too, like when we start blowing up and like getting swatted. Oh yeah, I mean, like you I have to change, <laughs> you have to change, you have to get shit to hide your address yeah, and shit. Yeah. We'd be sitting here and just someone fucking cops come here and this looks like, like a gun, I'm going to get shot. <laughs> I think you have a ways, ways to go before that, but I know, I know what you're saying. Oh, and the best thing is that we're not on YouTube right now, so the swearing's not a big deal. I don't it's, know if it's it is for Facebook or not. Well, I guess it's just, a, it's just depending on, like, if you want to get ad revenue, but again, it's your first podcast, right? So, weird. Everyone has to start somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, um, well, I do want to come on here to talk about, um... My cousin's music, he's fucking insanely good rapper. He produces his own music. He does all the shit in his house. Um, he's from, uh, oh, actually, I won't say that. Uh, where, are you, where are you from? I, yeah, I'm from a small town called Innisville. If you're familiar with the Red Deer, uh, Alberta area, it's about 20 minutes south. 20, yeah, 15, 20 minutes south of Red Deer. Where, where I've, known, I've known Dallas quite a while. 
It's he, weird. It's weird he, asking him these questions because I know <laughs> who he is, but I know that everybody who's watching it doesn't know. And this podcast is strictly for Kian and his music. Um, so we're starting off. I'm going to interview a bunch of artists from True Ability, uh, my family, my friends, coworkers. You know, just to relate to anybody who's watching. Um, Justin Funditis says yo, by the way. Shout out our friend Justin. He's, Shout out. He's also an amazing rapper from Innisville. He's one of the best you'll ever hear, so. Dude, he's so fucking good. We so just did good. a track together at Block and Cloud. It's out now, streaming everywhere. It's called Unheard. We're going to be making a music video, and he's going to be coming on the podcast, too. Maybe we should all just do one together. I'd definitely be down for that. Pad. Yeah, I'd like to do one with Invectrum, like to do one with Omen, all the... All the homies that I grew up with, right? I think you're right on the whole, you should, uh, hey Justin, or anybody watching, are the mics uh, overlapping each other? It wasn't on my computer, I just want to see if it is on yours. I can see the volume bars both go when I talk, so I just didn't know if like both mics were picking it up. But yeah, so, and then I want to like eventually project the, the chat. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I'll have it up on the screen. Comments I probably on. won't put it on TV because the latency. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had that? No. Like when you have you ever tried to hook a computer up to a TV? No. Yeah, it's fucking. No, the mouse is like. I've only ever done it with um, like when you're mirroring from Apple TVs. It's pretty smooth. Okay. Um, again, it's weird. It's awkward. I haven't done a podcast ever, and I haven't ever interviewed anybody, so I'm just learning. But that's why I think we should just kind of. Shoot the shit. Totally, totally. But I also want the viewers to get to know who you are. You know, like, it's, like, it's, it's dope. Like, this guy has, like, hundreds of songs stacked up. He releases music all the time. He has amazing uh, director stats when he's behind the camera. He's, if you go check out Jump Drunk ever since back in the day when we were making music videos in Red Deer, um, I was always inspired by... Music videos, the scenes and stuff, and I know you had a lot to do with that. It wasn't just Ronnie. You're probably yeah. being shout, just... shout out Ronnie Rubina as well, though. Really good videographer from Red Deer. Yeah. And he's not really doing it anymore that I'm aware of, but by choice, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. By choice for sure. Yeah, no, that's sick. Um, yeah. So been making music. I mean, I for people that do know me, they know that you know you played a large part in getting me getting me started in music. Growing up in a Kind of rural farm area. We that's in his film, yeah. Yeah, but then uh, you know when you, when you had the sorry guys, uh, the farm days. You know, that's Bruce View. Yeah, that's where the the music really started for me personally. I'm about two years younger than Dallas, so. But this kid was fucking so goddamn good when he first started. His first verse he ever wrote was fucking amazing. It was it was like way ahead of his time just because it was his first fucking verse i still think it stands the test today like listening back on a bunch of my old stuff i listen to it and i'm just like cringing and and then <laughs> no, even, I and that. i thought that with lauren too though lauren and i always look listen back to his verse and like oh they're like really cohesive and well just like spit and recorded like i have like a bunch of layers of shit and then he would have like a couple layers but it sounds so well done like and like just i was like oh that verse today still sounds good like a lot of my appreciate that too yeah, of course. I don't know, same thing though, even when I listen back to some of my first stuff with um, Dallas's brother, he's a rapper as well, and we had a group growing up called Villain Stylism that we started when we were about 14 or 15, and um, I, I don't know, I just I just think it runs in the family a little bit. I think even even when I listen to some of my first songs, they're... They're hard to listen to, and I'm not necessarily cringe. Putting them, putting them on in the whip when I tell people I rap, because that's kind of the stereotype they they assume, right? It's all it's probably this this gangster rap from this suburban kid. I I don't really like listening back to the old stuff, but I can still appreciate it for what it was and how it kind of got us to where we are now, right? Yeah, uh, being from Red Deer, Alberta, or Innisfil is usually a place nobody knows of, and being white. Like, I know it's kind of stereotypical, but people just don't expect much. Like, they're just yeah. like, you're out there like, Meh. Yeah, they're either like, oh, like you're, you want to be Eminem, or they just don't even yeah. take it seriously, or, or a combination of the two, for sure. What was the name of the last track you released? If you can think of it right now. Um, so even if it wasn't recent, like, what was the last one you put out? I put a single out 
late last year. I mean, we're only in the first week of January, but the last single I put out on streaming platforms called Chris Brown. Um, yeah, it's pretty dope. It's, it's, it's kind of like a cliche club record. It pays a little bit of homage to, to Chris Brown. If, if you're a fan of Chris Brown's music, you know, I interpolate certain lyrics from some of his most famous songs. And Insanely talented. It's, oh, Chris it's Brown is so insane. Good. He's, um, yeah. I mean, he's ar- arguably, arguably one of the best performers alive. Man, I'm gonna fucking... Yeah. I need to get the fuck out of this house. This cat is driving me crazy. I thought the vehicles driving by were gonna fucking drive me insane, but this cat is... I haven't heard fucking... any of the vehicles. No, no, you're right. But in my garage... Oh, I yeah, just yeah. accidentally said that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't get the fuck anymore. The podcast is in my fucking garage. <laughs> fuck you, you don't know where I live. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I said that to some nerd, and then he's like, I, don't I was just going to say, someone just, just to spite you is going to track down your VPN. Okay, uh, so what was the name of that song? Chris Brown. And you can find that where? Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, any, anywhere you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sick. Yeah, so like you can pull it up on your produce phone. Who produced the beat? This is sick. The questions are coming as I'm going because I yeah. thought I was going to be like afraid, not know what to ask. And they're like, oh, okay, what song? B? Yeah. Okay, go. That, I'll be honest, I'm not, it's just a producer I found off YouTube. I've okay. been sitting on that song for like. But you leased it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been sitting on that song for like probably over two years. So I can't quite recall the producer, but that's the thing. That's, it's, a, it's a gift and a curse, right? Because I make so many songs. But by the time I get around to putting them out, I've listened to them so many times that, oh, they, yeah. sound, that they sound the viewer hasn't me. though well that's the thing right and the reason i really jumped for that one because one of my one of my co-workers at the time i showed it to him and he was like that's like that's a smash right and yeah, to right. me i've listened to it so many times already in my head i'm like i don't know it's it's just going to be one of those songs that just sits in the vault but i'm i'm glad i put it out that's dope my favorite song of yours is the coochie one still i still think that's like the best sang so or, like you sang that hook so well yeah, I appreciate that. I, I like rest that song. Peace. I like that song. Yeah, rest in peace for sure. I I have to give a lot of credit to Shay Michael, who is formerly known as Cheddar Cheese. Battle rapper. Yeah. Extraordinaire. Very, Fucking very so good. So good at producing. Yeah, very good battle rapper. Extremely, extremely good at producing. Uh, super last minute, he he let me come to his crib and record that song, and he, he absolutely killed it on the mix. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a terrible singer, but he... He definitely put a little shimmer on that for me, right? I am a terrible singer. I mean, or I just don't give myself credit or I whatever. Can, whatever it is, I can hum a tune or whatever, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I still have to do so much tweaking, and it has to be tweaking as I'm making the song. Because if it's not like sounding how I want it to, I'm not like gonna like leave the studio until it's like kind of like formed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With whatever your that, plugins you're using and shit. That's one thing I've I've always given you credit for as well, though. It's, from from the jump when we were still you know quadruple stacking our our vocal layers and whatnot you always kind of had the ear for the for the layering the harmonies right it like it kind of it kind of became your signature sound back then having like yeah. the low five voices like yeah exactly even to this to this day when i hear that in in your newer music it kind of gives you that like nice nostalgic factor because it's just so polished now I think, uh, I'm learning, but I think I get it, we get it from the people we listen to, like, fucking Tech 9 Cali, like, they layer their shit so good, oh, yeah. and it's just, like, Calico, like, he doesn't need to layer shit very much, he's just an amazing singer, but, uh, I hear a lot in the music I listen to, a lot of, like, multiple sounding voices, like, compressed into one, or, like, layered over one, so it makes a different voice, or, or if one of them doesn't sound good alone, then they sound, they kind of just accent each other. Yeah. Yeah, it helps, it helps kind of fill the room, so to speak, right, when you're layering like that. So. Do you uh, have an idea when you're going to release your next song? Are you, or, like, what, what your next move is? Like, are you, are you going to get on a show soon with Cat B? Or are you going to, like, do, do, what are you doing? Song a month? Do you got a song coming out? Or I don't what? know, because again, man, I just, I just record and record and record, and it is, it is coming to a point where it's like, I got to, I got to do something with it, right? Have I to. have, I have so many songs and I show it to all the homies, like, oh, check this out. And even as I was saying, like with, with Justin, I just sent him 
um, a hook for a new song that we're working on. But even Justin and I, like, we have we have a CD's worth of music together. That's fucking that, insane, dude. That that we just haven't put out. So I really just kind of have to bite the bullet. Part of me just wants to start throwing them out for free, just to get the buzz going. Because years and years ago, when I was super, um, you know, involved with social media, and I was doing the whole. And this is everyday thing type of thing, like what I'm trying to start to do. Yeah, it's but more, like it it changed. I, I don't remember the exact year, but it changed a lot, especially with Facebook and like engagement. Because say if I you know I have over a thousand fans on my on my music page, it used to be if you post a status or you post a link to SoundCloud, whatever, your fans are going to see that. But but now they've changed it where. They kind of shadow, like they hide that from your fans unless you're paying for ads, right? So say yeah. I have 1,100 fans on my Facebook and I make a post saying, okay. hey, we'll see it. Well, yeah, it's like, oh, hey, if it, you know, 50 likes and I'll drop a song. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe four people see it because you can see your engagement on the post, right? Whereas it used to be before, and that that really fires you up, right? When you say like, hey, if I if I get enough yeah. engagement, like I'm gonna drop new music, and your yeah. fans are actually like, oh, yeah, like. It's, it's a simple thing as clicking a button and saying like, right? But I did, yeah, I stopped years ago. Just, I, I guess I kind of wanted to separate myself from the like whole social media aspect of it. Because even, especially now in my adulthood, like I don't like posting on social media or, you know, even, even with, say like on Instagram, and this is kind of a niche example, but if I'm scrolling through Instagram, I, I like stuff I see, but I don't like, All of them, I don't like, like it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Really, right. Really, and yeah, unless it's like, yeah. and it's, and it's, you know, I'm not trying to not help the creator and it just doesn't really cross my mind. I'm just like, Oh, it's on the screen. And that's something I've, I've tried. Even just better. throwing a like kind of helps too. No, that, like, and you that's what, just throw nothing on a video like, and I think that I always throw just at least a like. That's, that's, that's what I mean. Though, right? Because yeah, like, like I want I want people to like my stuff, but yeah, I, I I need to reciprocate that as well. So oh, you do, man. Yeah. <coughs> we got anybody in the comments right now? We do not. Well, we have Capital D saying what's up, but that's just when you were. Uh... I just pinned. I always just pinned one in just to. Oh, have... okay. You know, it's so funny just looking at the screen. Uh, I mean, again, it's the first time either of us have been oh. on a podcast, but it just like it is going to my face. Yeah, it's switching between them. But is it going to the 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 both of us? Because yeah. it, it only allowed me to choose two. No, it's it's going oh, to the fucking sick. Oh, and Just, Justin's still here too. Okay, tight. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, fuck Justin, man. And I was joking to you uh, about you not leaving the house in regards to us not being able to schedule time for a fucking music video. And I love you, but we got to figure it out, my man. I know you leave the house. That was a joke, but it's just like... There shouldn't be any problems, with, like, you know, like, if I, I never make an excuse, I'm not saying, like, I, I never say, nowadays, if I'm going to do something, I never say, uh, and this is me, <laughs> Kyle, shut the fuck up! Sorry, guys, um, I, uh, I try, I don't know, I just, uh, I try to just be like, if we can't do it on this day, we're doing the next one, we won't, like, make, like, can't for this reason or that, like, I'll bring it to you if I have to. Like, I will bring it to Innisfil to be, shoot the video if I have to, Justin. Um, uh, it's whatever. Whatever we have to do to get it done, I don't fucking care, man. I was just poking fun at you. Um, I know you leave the house. You're a hard worker. You're working crazy. You're busy working. So, and uh, I'm just excited to do it because that song is dope. And the idea I have us being, like, homeless in the street with a TV in the shopping cart and blocks it in the TV. Yeah, that is you know, like just We're just, like, bums on the street unheard. You know, like, I think that's cool. And then Block will be on the TV rolling blunts because it's, like, uh, kind of like I just need two blunts or whatever in the hood. Just random easy shit to do because he's in New York or he's in wherever he's at. And we can't, like, I think he's in Worcester or something. Uh, but he just can't... Uh, I don't want to fly in here just for the music video, or I, I, I don't even think you can get through the border right now without having a shot. I don't think he's down. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure hmm. um, how it's working in America right now. I, I know that we're close going there. Yeah, but you can go to like Mexico though. Yeah. Yeah. But I was just going to go to Mexico for Christmas. El Chapo's kid just got arrested. Mexico's going that. insane. And they're like, if you're fucking Canadian, stay the fuck inside. Or like if you're not from no, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just going to be like, oh, we're going to fucking chop your dome off and put it on a stick. But um, 
I actually just have a quick funny side story about when I was in Cuba. The, uh, my friend Lauren, he was part of Alberta Murderers. When we had the group going, uh, he got married in Cuba. And then my little brother met his wife in Cuba. And then we went way later and they got married in Cuba. So it was like two trips and both trips had about 50 the first time and about 70 the second time. And it was like the coolest time ever. And Cash, my friend Cash, fucking, <clears throat> if you see this, you're fucking hilarious and crazy and fucking psycho. The dudes told me he woke up on a couch in the city, in the city, in someone's house. Like, you do not go in, like, I'm not saying everybody in Cuba is fucking dangerous, but it's yeah, like, when you're fucking rolling at night and you're blacked out and you got like a fucking iPhone 10 and like a stack of fucking... I don't, I don't want to wake up on any strange... He woke up, his Not cell phone's somewhere. gone, all his shit's gone, he's like, he's lucky he didn't walk out with his passport, but he just woke up in a, on a couch and there was like a party and he like, had to like get back somehow and I was like, dude, you're so fucking lucky. Like, they jacked his phone for sure though, I'm yeah. pretty sure he had like a pimp iPhone yeah. and that was gone. How did he even, how did he even get that? I don't know. I, I I don't know, but I know that he how he started it is that all the fucking um, places, like all the resorts, are all beside each other. So you can like walk. He just walked down the beach to another resort, and you can like walk in there and just start eating. If if you don't like, they don't see you right away. Most of the people have wristbands, but yeah. if they're not really um, paying attention, you just walk in there and it's free food on all the resorts, bro. Free food and booze. Like, you're just, like, buffets down the fucking hotel, 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 just keep walking. So sick, and I think he said he went to another hotel and then left with people. Oh, and that's what I remember, is, like, walking way down the beach to another, like, party or something. There's one time I was walking down the beach <clears throat> with my ex, <clears throat> And uh, I was like, oh yeah, we're going to go have like a romantic night on the beach or whatever. Don't ever go on the beach in Cuba at night. A thousand fucking mini crabs up on the beach. Like I looked down, it was like night, sp like, like spiders, bro. Like yeah, sharp no. spiders. And I was like yeah. running back, freaking. And I'd like run through like a crowd of them and step on all of them. And I'd run through another because they're just like everything that's like, it's creepy at night. The ocean, the fucking thing, it's crazy. So much shit comes out of the ocean, it's fucking, it's terrifying. And I'm actually really scared of the ocean. Like, I used to be yeah, scared of fucking pools, like, because of sharks as a kid in a swimming pool. Like, that's mental. There's no fucking sharks in a swimming pool, but I was still, like, afraid of, like, drowning in sharks. I don't know what the fuck it was. There was, so, uh, like, that growing up, I don't know. I can't remember where it was. My brain wants to see it, Kimberly in BC. I know that's not correct, but... At the hotel, in the swimming pool, in the deep end, they had a shark painted on the bottom. And I'll never, I, that, that scarred me. Even to, into adulthood, it's like jumping in, and the first thing you see is just a shark coming up, like, yeah. swimming right at you. Whoever sanctioned that, like, signed so up on it, like, yeah, no, yeah. Let's, let's do this in the, in the family $89 a night hotel, like, Cause we're, my sisters were in a dance competition or something. I can't Irish, remember where it was, but I, uh, Irish dancing was Irish sim dancing similar. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I always bragged to people about that. Really? But yeah. I was like, my cousins are sick dancers. hundred percent. They, yeah, they yeah, were very, very, so good. Yeah. They were very good at what they did. That's for sure. All three of them. I remember literally the color of their fucking clothes they even had on was blue and green. Right? Yeah, the um, plaid one we had it on videotape, bro. I like we used to like I, we had all the home movies and shit. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember which uh, which sister was which color, but yeah, they killed it. And uh, then I also remember I was gonna say home movies that uh, there's a video of me in the little kids' pool talking to one of my friends at his birthday, and he's on the other side of the pool, and he's standing in the pool. That's how shallow it is, and that's how scared I am. I'm in the fucking little pool. I was like, just go over to the other side. You can stand up and you're standing on the water. And I was like, fuck that. I was terrified, dude. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like backflipping off the five. You know, like I just like went from like being terrified to be like, I'm going to backflip off this rocky mountain into the water. We got some more people in here. So loud I couldn't. What's that? I don't know. No, I was just, uh, oh. yo, goatee. Oh, is there a way to see 
It just says so, so loud I couldn't, and it's like on the page. Oh, that's that's um like our talking auto generated captions. Oh, that's happening right now. Yeah, that's sick, dude. Yeah, why are they just, changing? There's those? just a small. It might be a little log or like a latency. Because I know that the video on my phone is coming a few seconds. Oh, okay, that's probably what it is. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going to quickly address these comments. First, just want to say thanks to Justin for stopping by. I love you, buddy. Yeah, I'm you so too. stoked that you and Kieran are, like, fucking making music together. And I knew that it was going to be, like, dude, me and Kieran have fights that bad. And we're still here. We have differences, and we might fight again. But if we fight again, I know right around the corner, we're going to be cool. Um, Nathan Brody, just want to give a shout out. Yo, Goaty. I'm not a goat, but I wish I was. Hey, take that. No, I'm just kidding. Greatest of all time. Greatest of all time? Do you mean Gre time? Greatest of all... Greatest of all time. Tootsie Rolls? Uh -huh. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you, Nathan, for checking us out, dude. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Nathan Brody. Chris, uh, it is Kieran, and you, you did spell it wrong, but it is a hard name to spell. It's C-I-A-R-A-N. And then there's, like, one of those things across the A. Yeah. What's that called? It's called a fada. A fada. And so I don't know so. how to find them on a fucking keyboard, and every <laughs> time I spell his name, I feel bad. No, it's all good. Um, Chris, what up? Uh, sorry, I didn't go snowboarding with you, buddy. Uh, Donnie, what Which up? Which Chris what up? is it? Um, Chris V, he's like, uh, he was like, did some rapping in right here. He's always at our shows, like, shaved head, cascades. I'll have to, I'll have to, yeah, yeah, I'll have to look at his Facebook photo after. Shout out Chris, though. Crystals. A freestyle? I don't freestyle because I don't freestyle. get paid. I don't get paid for freestyles. No, I'm just kidding. She was the one that was always with me. Sucking my dick and don't cost me any. I can't freestyle. The, the one thing, the, the, maybe on here I might start playing beats one day because i i seen those people have that podcast where they like rap at the table those like jamaican oh, dudes yeah, yeah. those guys are sick yeah i think they're jamaican or african or something they got like the, the one dude has like just about, killing like the bars yeah, that's a very um the, kind of like wu-tang style to them oh yeah like yeah. the storytelling and what i know who you're talking about i can't remember their name so i think it's so dope that we have even one person watching that's so sick yeah right so we have it on a six uh, second interval on the screen changing. Uh, if it's not enough or it's too much, just let us know. I think this is just for live in the video. I don't know what the video is gonna look like after if it does auto edit. Eventually when we uh, have uh, a little bit more capital in the podcast and maybe we're turning a profit or we have some other interests in the podcast, we could have someone behind the cameras, but for now, I am operating the phone and we have it on auto. Oh, it's capping here. Hold on. Sorry. Psst. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, Dallas and I were talking today. I had asked him if he was doing a pod with one of our friends uh, in Vectrum. Yeah, check, we're out, doing... check out his beats. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah we're doing a pod with him tomorrow. Um, so then Dallas asked me if I wanted to do one today. So he literally set this stuff up yeah, a few was... hours ago and just yeah. we're kind of winging it. But yeah. Winging it, winging it in the living room, and uh, it's going to be in the garage. I'm going to have a spot where I can perform live with speakers and record my music and podcast all in the same spot. You can, you'll be able to see us rehearse for shows, see us listen to music for free. We're going to listen to your music for free, excuse me. Um, promote our merchandise, talk about conspiracies. We're going to just be super active. And like, I don't know, Kieran and I moved to Calgary a, a long time ago and we don't see each other that much. And Travis has been here for a long time. Danny's been here for a long time. A couple of people I know. It's actually pretty cool because moving here has made it, um, made me get closer to people that I hadn't been as close with. Like Travis, like we were friends in Red Deer, but we weren't as close as we are now. We're like really fucking grinding as a team. And, yeah, it's uh, cool. To, it's, yeah. Sorry to cut you Yo, off. Go ahead. It's cool to see the growth, though, because you know, even good. even before I was rapping, you guys were still doing things together, right? Because I, you know, <laughs> I remember trying to do a show when I was seventeen, and Omen would vouch for me, and I think it was at Cheers North. Can't recall. Oh, to get because you were underage. Yeah, yeah. So so it was like, oh, I'm just gonna spit. And, 
walk off stage kind of thing. I won't stay and, and they wouldn't let me. But I always appreciated that because Travis, I hadn't even met him before that. He, he they could get their music. license like revoked. Oh, no, 100%. It was just, it was just cool. I still think though that like, didn't your sisters get to like perform or something because they were underage and went to it? Or, or maybe Probably. I just heard, maybe I just heard that in general where performers have. Well, it's happened. I mean, think, yeah, think of, yeah. think of, if you, if, say if you look at like the rapper Chief Keef, he got, he got famous He's when he was 17. like 15. He oh, was like 16. Oh my God. He was 16 for sure, but maybe even 15, but he was like on house arrest and. Doing he gangster was even, shit when he was a kid. Yeah, he was like shooting up police and whatnot. But, I mean, Chicago. Gangster shit. Chicago is something different for sure. But he shot rap. He obviously had the ability to perform in clubs and whatnot before he was legal. Especially if yeah. it's in the States because there isn't the legal age 21 there. Or does yeah. it depend on the state? I'm not sure, actually. I think yeah. it does depend on the state. Just like kind of like provinces, like 19 in BC and 18 here. So, same with Shaggy T. Dope, even have performed around 17. And, uh... Yeah. I still think you could have. It just had to have been like a sneaky way, and then and then oh. just have to be like a. It's just a certain thing. Like they're just like no, and it's, they they probably could have got away with it. Just you know, back back to that point. The the reason I brought that up is just again to to kind of see the growth between even you and Omen and and true ability. Like that's you know it's been it's been well over ten years, and he's still doing it. You're still doing it. I'm still doing it. Pas- passionately too. haven't been making a profit been doing it passionately would love to turn a profit yeah would absolutely yeah. love it not against making money off our music but haven't been deterred from not to not making music because we don't make money like like capital d collapse cost me a lot of money all the tracks that you lease and all the equipment that you buy and all the places that you go like if you racked it all up, it's a lot of fucking money. And uh, I think people, that's what really separates um, people who want to do what they want to do. And like from the quitters, like I always, uh, I love Steve-O so much. He's always like, man, skateboarding weeds out the quitters. Because as soon as they fall, they're fucking either back on the board or they're fucking done. Yeah, and I'm like, that's what it is with people and their dreams and shit. It's like. I work eight hours at a job every single day, and it's my nightmare. It's a nightmare, not because I hate the job, but because it's not what I want to do with my it's life. Take, taken away from. So my how? Life. Why wouldn't you work eight extra hours on something that you love? And that's what this is, is like. Just having like extra time, and uh, doing something else, and trying to fucking ship that over because I do not want to. All the guys seem happy that are like 40, 50 at where I work, and they're awesome dudes, and have a great career and for me it's going to be something I can fall back on god forbid something happened because I'm married and I have to have a second plan but this is it this is what I want to do and for the three days of the week if I can I'm going to do as much of this shit as I can yeah. interview fucking dope artists like Huron fucking Beckdrum Travis Elman people that are on true ability people that are in Calgary people that are in Alberta Canadian artists uh, people we're touring with Fans, friends, family. It's going to be dope. Let, well, me, let, me, uh, let me switch it back over to you. What's what's your plan coming up for the new year music-wise? I know you're getting into the podcast space and everything, but... Yeah. So I have a goal of uh, be just being... The, the goal is to have that number, like I said, the four and four and the one. Yeah. The one music video a month. The four podcasts released each weekend every Friday, and four songs the same day. Because they'll be like impactful, I think, to be like, hey, by the way, there's a new song out, go check that out, yeah. and we're potting right now. And if I can do that, and if I can't, my goal is to be as consistent as I can and just have at least some solid shit each month. You know, if the number doesn't match up, I'm not going to be like, oh, fuck, I'm not doing it, but because I, I always am like, either do way better than I could have, or don't reach my goal but i never let it like fuck with the end goal it's just like trying to put out as much material as you can and i just give props to people to be consistent uh and putting stuff out because every day you're just not motivated and uh you have to find that you know kind of happy balance yeah yeah Yeah. oh it's dope i was watching steve o podcast the other day he's like um my dad he's like everybody on instagram is so happy it's like, I hate it. 
everyone, he's like, it's this not real. Something. It's not real. Yeah. And he's like, I just want to be fucked up on Instagram, show some real life shit. And I was yeah. like, that's what it'd be. That's like the equivalent of like making something when you really don't want to. Because usually you're only making something when you're like positive and be like, yeah, we're a podcast. But it's like, you have a shitty day. Like, we're doing a fucking podcast. Yeah. I'm fucking angry today, but I'm still here. No, you don't have to project that. But you still have to fight through that and be like, even if you're not in the mood, you should probably still be making something. And that's what creates the character is like fighting through the unmotivating. Like, or it's challenging to be like, try to write when you don't want to or. Try to make content when you don't want to. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I kind of look at the musical sphere and then the podcasting sphere. And keep in mind, it's the only one I've ever done. But um, with with um, music, I don't know. I sometimes I even force myself to write, even if I even if I know as I'm writing it, it's whack. Because yeah. I kind of because I kind of treat my music as. Like Kobe, rest in peace. Like going to the gym after the game and shooting, shooting free throws for two hours. Like ten hours. Yeah, yeah. Like the guy is a fucking psychopath. But but whereas let's say it's content. Like if if you and I were making like a comedic sketch or something, it's like yeah, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. But you can really push those things to where like this isn't funny at all, and and the audience would be able to tell like all oh, that their heart's not in it kind of thing. That's the thing I like about music is you kind of wear your heart on your sleeve while you're making it, right? But it, the reason I say that is because I was watching one of my favorite podcasts be interviewed on another podcast, and the... Uh, podcasters? Yeah, the, the podcasters like were asking them, mm-hmm. you know, when when you are having a bad day or a bad week, like, do you do you keep it off or do you cancel that, that podcast? Because, like, I really like Rory and Maul. I know that I was telling you earlier, and they do Tuesdays and Fridays. But they were saying they've they've built kind of such a rapport with their audience where their audience well more so like their audience kind of thinks of them as like the homies right yeah so it's like if they are having a bad day or like if rory's dog is sick like puking on the ground like he can go on the podcast and and the viewers know that about him and they they resonate with it and you think he's not gonna have the date like he's not gonna go on because of that or he just does no matter what no like he 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 was saying like i still podcast even when i'm having a bad day oh yeah that's what i'm saying yeah with with the audience that we've created like we can kind of in a in a sense be vulnerable on the podcast yeah you the only thing is you know you kind of want to i don't know teeter that line of like i don't want people the other day, I shit my pants. Oh, no, well, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm more so, and, you know, I even, again, thought about this with the music stuff, is, like, I want people to gain a sense of me, like, oh, they, they kind of know what I'm about, but I also don't want people to think, like, because they, you know, watch my music videos, or if they watch us podcasting, that they, like, know our ins and outs, right? Because, like, you're still, you're still, there's still a lot that you don't see when someone's, on camera a hundred percent yeah yeah and you might get a glimpse of something because how many cell phones are around nowadays especially being like a celebrity and shit um but uh yeah sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no no it's all good yeah i I guess i I was rambling a little bit there but it's just it's just being able to kind of toe that line of what you want to, what you want to share and like, I put too much of my personal life online and I try not to, I try not to, but I think that the reason why I do is because sometimes I don't have anybody to talk to and dude, I'm telling you right now, someone throwing in a like and saying a positive comment makes me feel better. And if I can't, if I, like I can talk to my wife, I can talk to you and talk to Trav and talk to my brother. I got a lot of people to talk to you, but sometimes you don't want to, you just kind of like, I don't even know how it is. Like, I don't look down on people who fucking can't hold back some of their thoughts, man. Like, I feel like that's what a diary is for. It's kind of like, I know Facebook is kind of like that in a sense where you're just putting your thoughts out for other people to read. It's like a public fucking diary. And it's, you kind of got to hold that back. But what you're saying with those people being real, the cool thing is that other people can relate, and I think some people yeah. respect you not really having, being afraid. Kind of the wall up. Yeah, being like afraid to fucking be yourself. So, 
I want to just be like unapologetically myself. Yeah. Is that the right word? Yeah, it's like just be like, you know what, I'm fully myself. I'm, I'm not afraid to say anything. And I don't want to be like, be like too sad or depressed online. I want to, but I also don't want to be like, I'm always happy. Instagram, I'm yeah. always fucking happy because it's not true. Like you just said, like me and this guy are never always, always cool. Like we're not always fucking cool. And like that's real shit. Yeah. I'm not going to be on here and be like, I'm not going to be like that. So, and I think a lot of the people who make core fan bases of music or uh, podcasts or whatever they do, they are just like themselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. That is one thing that you've, um, I don't know. That's, that's one thing I do admire about you though, is you're, you're pretty consistent in who you are. I always feel like I have odds stacked against me and where I'm like not the best in what I'm trying to do, but I'm always positive. Like, for trying to be, I'm not always positive, but, like, odd stuff against me, like, I'm not the best rapper, I don't think I was, like, I don't know, I'm just, like, it's, like, a hard, it's a hard route to navigate, but I'm, like, always, like, it's all good, like, you can do it too type shit, I feel like, yeah. I'm almost, like, get that hype shit, I, I'm, I'm hype over, like, making someone else hype, and that makes me hype, and I'm, like, oh, shit, if I can, like, influence someone or motivate them, I'm, like, Oh man, like, like you know, like, if, if that makes sense, like, trying to be, like, sometimes maybe you not see it in yourself and you push out some energy to someone, or you're always pushing out energy, and it does help you. Some people might be, like, don't give out too much, but just seeing people be, like, man, and they'll say something positive back to you, and then it'll just reinforce, like, what you're doing. I don't know. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Word, word, word. How's your mom? She's doing well. Yeah. Sorry yeah. I didn't come Christmas. That's all good, man. No, honestly, man, I fucking wanted to go, and I've been texting your mom, we're going to have dinner or something soon. Yeah. She's like, no, she worked that. If we're in the same city, or she made it sound like we were in the same city, I was like, you're in Calgary? I'm oh, going to yeah. fucking go. She probably, yeah, she probably forgets sometimes that, that you're up No, there. she just misspelled what she, or, or I read it wrong, because you know me, I fucking run through sentences and don't read a lot <laughs> you know like just like literally see the first and last word and then start messaging someone before and then travis like did you actually read the sentence no i'm dead serious there's been so many times he's like no about the merch order it showed up and i was like just talking about like the oh it's supposed to show up to the second to the 12th if you pay 35 dollars. but then if you pay 170 it will for surely show up between the second and the fifth. And I get like, they got this, the weight and the, how far it is all this shit. But I'm like, to me, it was like a total rip off when I looked at it. And I was like, well, why would I pay the 170 when I can pay 30? And it's, it showed up a day before the 170 thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so it kept, that was just me getting lucky. Or they just didn't have orders. It's just really, it just, I don't know what it but is. I mean, the thing with that is like, how can, how can you ever know? Like if you pay that 170, it might, what if it showed up on the 12th? Yeah. Or like way late yeah. and you're like, I paid the 170, it happens all the fucking time. I look at the comparison and the options and then, but then I really looked at it and I didn't notice that it was like, the gap is like, they're just covering themselves. Yeah. Yeah. If I had a website and then 20 people were like complaining about timing and you're just like, oh, well, we just clarified that it might be an extra week in case some shit happens because of and I mean, lots of, you know, even drop shipping companies, they'll do the whole, you know, you purchase something, it's like, oh, expect it in four to 10 weeks. They don't even have the product yet, right? They're, they're collecting all the money. And then within those four to yeah. 10 weeks, they're, they're actually producing the product and then, and then yeah. selling it, which isn't, which isn't a bad strategy. It's just when the product then doesn't get made in time and someone's already waited like two months for it at the at the end though in a business fucking hustler's mindset they're like i don't give a fuck they're just like as long as you eventually get it as yeah. long as like if i got a million fucking pre-orders and i'm like stacked up and i gotta just like wait a little bit longer some people like i had to wait a little bit longer they're like i don't give a fuck i'm sorry to the customer but i just got a million fucking orders but it's and we're fulfilling them and that's not fair but that's how 90 percent of those companies work yeah i've even heard people say like big ass millionaires are just like in podcast interviews and they're like just get like a million of them even if you don't even have the product you know what it is wolf of wall street the guy's selling shit that doesn't exist and then it exists after the money he's like put up for it you know like or it could be a lie 
most of that shit was a lie. The stock shit was a lie. Yeah. He's selling like penny stocks, but yeah, I just I mean take, like I take what millionaires on podcasts say with a grain of salt sometimes. Yeah, well, well, but they're millionaires, and like you I mean, have to they, learn. They made they made their money majority of the time off different ventures than like I'm, I'm oh, buying this thing off Amazon. No, no, for no. $2 no. Yeah, just nowadays, like drop shipping and yeah. all this, like what the new age thing is, like sit at your home, sell shit off your computer, and. Uh, I just heard, I'm not going to mention the name, but just this one guy, he's like, yeah, he's like, if you could, like, rack up a million fucking pre-sales, and you're a couple months late, like, who gives a fuck? Like, they still got it, and you still started your business. Yeah, as long as I'm not, like, stuck with, I don't like, want to piss anybody off. 10,000 potato peelers in my garage. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. No, that's why you get the money first. Yeah. That's why it's like, okay, you got to wait for your potato peeler. Yeah. I ain't going to hold this potato peeler. No. <laughs> All right, so, by the way, we are starting a dropshipping company. First product, yeah. potato peelers. Potato peelers. No, I am going to start dropshipping. And oh, I'm going to randomly man. sprinkle in capital D merchandise. Mm. Like, oh, it's like, potato peeler. Capital D, potato peeler. <laughs> no, see, that shit's funny. I don't care what anybody says. That I, I, as a viewer of podcasts, I could just see you listening to that. It was kind of funny. The other, the other thing that I was going to mention before we switch topics as well though about you know like oh well if we get the pre-orders and everything it's also about client retention though right like if you make someone wait like for example and you know i don't want to go on a huge kanye thing but when his jesus is king album came out i ordered the vinyl from his website and I, I knew, like, I have Apple Music, Spotify, whatever. And you I, love fucking Kanye. I so love you're talking Kanye. shit on no, it. No, no, no. You're saying no. the whole order process. No, to- totally. I, I, I love Kanye He's to this dope. day. But uh, I ordered the vinyl of it. And I just, to this day, and that album came out probably, like, it was before COVID, I think. I just never got okay. it. But it got to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to, like. You still never got it. I never got it. From I never Kanye. got it. Kanye. Yeah. Yeah, I never got it. From Yay. Yeah. Someone that big didn't make an order. Because I, I have, like, one guy still waiting for something in Germany, and I feel like an absolute piece of shit. And I'm, like, at the bottom of the food chain. For someone to be, like, that high, I, it'd probably be a little bit harder to get, like, millions of orders out and su- successfully, like, make everyone happy. And for I, like, I'm not saying it doesn't feel bad. I'm just saying the comparison... I feel like for me, it's more like understandable because I'm like penny pinching, mm-hmm. you know, the other guy could be like, have so much resources and like send fucking again a thousand, he could print up a thousand vinyls. I print up like two and I'm like, oh, again, can no, barely you know, afford to send them. You know, I mentioned in, it's not it's him, crazy. Doing, it's not him doing the processing though, right? But, but like, I'm not, I'm how not trying many to defend fucking, bad business no, no, I know, I know, but, but it's how like, many fucking people... Got didn't get their vinyl. Yeah. How, How much was it? it? It's like at least like thirty bucks or something. Like it wasn't. You have to learn not to burp in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but again, it's like you know I don't I don't personally blame Kanye for that. But am I going to order something from that website again? Probably not. And it's I, like and action coming, here, and that's coming for yeah. Another fucker for so long. Yeah, Psychopathic. Sure I should be voluntary. Like, still. Like, his old hatch of gear from like five years ago. <laughs> Yo, get God, my boy, get my boy, you need some hatch of gear and a yay vinyl. Once the Pyramid Podcast goes up, like we need a sponsor that prints vinyls and gives us free hatch of gear. No, I'm just kidding. You remember when they had the hatchet house? Yeah, because I I remember, and I've, I've said this story a million times, like forgive me if it's annoying at this point, but I found out about AMB winning the Underground Psychos contest when they, you know, won the um, record label or the record contract. That was such with, a dope show to watch, by the way. With Psychopathic, but Dane, Dane didn't believe me. They're like, oh yeah, there's this new group called Axe Murder Boys. Like, you're, you're making that up. It's like, no man, they're gonna be like- Probably because Dane just knew about Psychopathic first and in, in the back of his mind, not knowing that he really is thinking this, he's like, something about it that i don't but they, like, anyway, no that's they, just what it is that's yeah, yeah, yeah that's what innocently say they they you know became our <laughs> our favorite group but no that that's james I always, garcia i always i always think about like underground psychos and hatchet house and just that was peak because because i didn't grow up a juggalo or anything i probably <coughs> i probably started listening to the clowns and whatnot when i was like 
pretty fucking young though. Like, yeah, like 12, 13. <laughs> got it from you and Dane. Not that young, just I was like... But I, but I mean, you I guys really think about it though, like Dane, Dane and I are the same age. Yeah. Dane and I are the same age, and Dane was listening to it years before I was, right? And you said, I, oh, then it's got to be a little bit later than that for you, because I don't think Dane was that young. Dane well, was probably like about... When did Ju- Justin... 14, 15. Because like, wh- when we moved out to the farm, I think we were listening to it a little bit before that. Yeah, but so. I think I was like... Yeah, so maybe it was around... I think you guys are... Oh, maybe so, I was like 14 or something. I just remember... You're older than him? No. He's older than me about like six months. Same year though. We're both it's very close. In the same year. I, I, maybe he was, he, he was listening to it before me because Jordan, I used to fucking hate ICP. You know, you guys are weird. Did you get into it through Marilyn Manson a little bit too? Because like they Marilyn Manson, it. Rob Zombie, and yeah. like, I don't think he listened to Marilyn Manson because, or ICP because of him. I no, think I just, I just mean the same kind of aesthetic. Like, 100%. But. The same type of music, but like like Rob Zombie came from our dad. Yeah. And then fucking, uh, or no, no, no. We liked Rob Zombie. That was like our thing. And then my dad got turned on to it, which is crazy because he, like, obviously your older people are always Your dad, like, seems like a Rob Zombie guy. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, Rob. And, uh, um, he, Dane was in it, and then I remember I liked Psychopathic. Sorry to go off a rant here. I liked Psychopathic because of Dane and Blaze. Because that was, Blaze and Jekyll Brothers were the first, or One Less, not One Less G. Or yeah, Cold One Less. Cold and Grundy? No, no, One Less G in the Hood. Yeah. Yeah, like that one, because that was the first one, right? That was, yeah, that yeah. was his first one. That album and um, Jekyll Brothers were the first two albums Dane had, I think. And I just remember being out at the farm when we first moved out there and Dane just got those albums. And I think I was about, you're right, I think Dane was like 12. Or yeah. like younger than that, because I was fourteen then. I'm like two yeah. years older. So I, so oh. I was, so yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, so I was probably like twelve, thirteen when I started on the as well. And then, uh, but that the the reason I say all that because yeah, Hatchet House, A and B, like that that like two thousand two thousand four, two thousand five ish stage. It was just the the height of like we all bumped the clowns. We were all making music. We were all repping Hatchet gear. We were. It was just such a it was nostalgic insane. kind of time, it right? Was insane. Like, Remember yeah. Mike Sheridan's collection? Oh, yeah. I remember it's going to like, his house, and I think maybe that, like, well, I always collected skate clothes and had a big closet, but when I went to see his closet, he had a double-sided closet, and he's like, this side, never worn. All brand new with tags, and I was like, I need probably to still fucking like rethink that. my <laughs> life right now. I was like, oh, this fucking 100 CD booklet, every disc from Psychopathic. Like, I had fucking Psychopathic CDs. Yeah, I'm not like gonna say who, but someone sold somewhere. them for crack. A big booklet of CDs. Uh, loved one of mine. Love you. Not gonna say a name. Sold them for crack. I didn't think that I knew or what happened to him. Or didn't. And then Buddy, who I'm talking about, his friend, came up and told me they're gone. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but I just I, I think of his collection. That was massive. <laughs> oh, that's the that's the funny clickbait shit though. <laughs> Capital D's friend smokes crack and sold his albums. <laughs> I'm just, but yeah, like we all spent thousands of dollars so on Hatchet Gear, and the first little while we started ordering, the orders weren't really going through, or they were taking forever, or they never came through. I think it got worse with time. I think it got better because over time, I was getting all my shit. Well, I, I wasn't necessarily struggling with getting my stuff, but when I kind of phased out of ordering Hatchet Gear, but then the people around me that did, did still order it, yep. they they stopped getting their stuff. So. Um, can you remember who else was on Hatchet House, or were there other people, and why did they even create it? Was it like a sub-label that they didn't yeah. want, like, because they were like, wanted like another label... Because didn't, like, Alex Abyss own, like, half Psychopathic at one point? Maybe it was, like, an outlet to have other artists that they didn't have to give a percentage away. Or they were trying to recreate something. Or they just didn't want these, like, beta or smaller artists that weren't as big as them yet to be, like, on Psychopathic. Like, we're going to have, like, this smaller one. I think they also... I can't quite recall now, but I know... Say, like, the DJ Clays and... Do you remember, um, for example, I know he was never signed, but there was that rapper Mars that wore the Hannibal Lecter mask? Yep, Mars um, with an S, or with a Z. Yeah. Yep. 
Because there's think, two bars. I think what they may have been doing was... Oh, yeah, the Dark Lord is Mars, too. Um, yeah. I, I don't really know how all the label politics and whatnot Excuse work, me. but they could... Cool. That was just dropped his mic. They could um, have someone put something out under Hatchet House and not be necessarily like contractually obligated. I thought that or... was Joe and Joey Records, though, for the beats they stole. That's what they did for Psychopathic Riders, but that was to like straight up break the law. So, so you're talking about so what I, you're saying with what I was saying that they didn't have to get get to track or uh, keep, like, keep I, in I, mind. I, keep in mind, you're not on mic. Oh, right okay, now. sorry. Hold on. He's running a grinder. Uh, sorry, Kate. Sorry about that, folks. I don't have a mic on me. I just was uh, grinding up some weed. Um, so contractually meaning. They didn't want to give a percentage away because someone else was psychopathic, or they just didn't want. They just wanted a whole new entity of. Well, income. yeah, I can't. I, I can't quite remember. We don't know the details, but I'm yeah. just asking what you think. Yeah, like, no. it's not facts. We're yeah, just... yeah. Um, what what I meant with the whole contract thing is like say, say like A M B for example signed in two thousand six. It's like hey, we're signing you for. Um, multi-year, multi-record deal. So you give us... Ten, ten years. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, yeah. Like you, you give us three albums over the span of, say, four or five years, and then you get X amount and whatever funding up front. I just wonder if they made that sublet label so it was just like, hey, like we get paid back a lump sum or something. I don't I don't know. Because yeah, I, I actually forgot about Hatchet House until you mentioned it. Okay. Because I heard a story about... Alex Abyss getting like fucking death threats from somebody from Psychopathic or their boys and they're like they're they're like it seems like they're like oh we have nothing to do that we don't know anything about that but Alex Abyss just like up and disappeared and like peaced out and I don't know the logistics or like the actual facts but when I look at it it's like he owned a piece of Psychopathic and maybe stole a bunch of money and then disappeared and it was like, what the fuck? This was way long after Hatchet House. Long after Hatchet House, but maybe reason why that they're like making Hatchet House because they're like, so he was not maybe. a part of it. At I all. don't think he was part of it yeah. at all, but I don't know. That makes sense. You know, like that sucks though because I just loved Alex Abyss and uh, Big Money Hustlers and shit. Yeah, he was yeah, and just like their the way they had it is just they had good chemistry well, yeah, and they, shit. But it was he weird. Was from, like he was there from day one. Yeah, like when someone's like in control of your money and they're like, you only get 50 bucks a day for food. Remember when they said that? ICP's like, you, Alex would give us 50 bucks a day. We'd go to McDonald's every day and eat cheap food and save all our money. But then he ended up being like richer than them. Mm -hmm. Is what I took from it. I don't know yeah. if that's right. Don't quote me, juggle, juggle. That's like no, I can't. ICP. Like, I don't actually know. This is just me as a fan standpoint. I wish I knew more. I'd be sick to have you guys on the podcast one day and actually figure that shit out. But. If you guys can talk about it, because a lot of people, like Twisted, can't talk about a lot of the shit they're going through because they sign shit. Yeah. Where they're like... Like non-disclosures. Oh. Yeah. Fuck. No, I, I remember when, when all the stuff with Psychopathic and Twisted and whatnot was first starting. Um, ICP went, like, did, like, a couple Fago Lovers interviews, and, like, they went on No Jumper a couple times as well. They... They talked cool. about it a little bit, but I... I the ICP can talk about it. No, I know, but I'm, saying, I'm saying... I'm saying, though, they, they, there was still that kind of veil of mystery around it, right? I don't know, especially with them being like... But here's the veil of mystery. We own everything you ever made that makes you money now, and you're you never going to get it back, and that's what you hear. ICP? Yeah. No, I'm talking oh. about, like, the Alex Abyss stuff. Oh, okay, sorry. That. sorry. Yeah, sorry, I went into... The, I, I jumped the gun there. My yeah, um, I just mean, I, I especially think because they are still wildly successful and they're like they're in their 50s for sure if not 60s and like Eminem is 50 yeah and uh Block's 50 yeah Snoop so is in his 50s I'm pretty sure SCP is in their 50s they're in their 50s they're, 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 they're in their 50s they're in their 50s yeah. for sure I just Me and Eminem share the same birthday you and Eminem yeah, yeah that's October sick. 17th that's sick I didn't know that. I knew that Not was your That I'll ever be on his level where you can sound like him or even even a big fan. Because I love ICP. I never really got into Eminem until I was like an okay rapper. And I was like, oh, this guy's he's fucking insane. Crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. So like fucking There is insane. a reason he sold 10 billion records. Like, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but uh, yeah, just just to kind of cap off the whole ICP thing, I just think because they're at a point in their life where they're they're pretty much just riding out to the sunset, and I I don't mean that negatively, but what what's the point of bringing up all this behind the scenes money talk? And I don't I don't think we're ever gonna know the whole truth. I guess is I honestly I, this is this is what I thought before I even ever heard them breaking up. This is what I thought is that ICP owns them. ICP turned into the thing they hate. Record labels. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. By business model and all that shit. It's like, oh, well, we're a record label now, so we own your shit. And you signed it. It was up to you. And that's why Twisted's fighting to get their rights back. And that's why they do posters and tour names that are based off their albums they can't sell. And, and some of them are based off the ones they got back and the ones they're currently doing. Yeah. But all the big shit that they have... They had to really fight back for rights for a bunch of that shit. And then a bunch of dominoes fell after that with the Otis thing and the fucking the daughter thing and all that like craziness. But before that, I just think it was like a money and uh, and, and, and like an ego thing where Twist was like, we just need to fucking do it ourselves. And I think they even like Twisted made... Twisted left in 2003 too, or tried to. Sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to interject that in there. Yeah, I'm not good with dates, but I just know that. Well, so it's probably way, it was way right? before remember, they actually like publicly were like "fuck you." Well, it's because like before Green Book came out, and that's what that's where the whole Magic Ninja thing came from. But that was like back then, and they were going to release Green Book, which came out in 2003. And they were even promoting it in the movie. Yeah. Oh, so just to think about that now, Magic like, Magic Ninja. Well. So that that's what I mean, right? It's it didn't happen overnight. This has been coming for for literal decades so and you would always think that like nobody wants to be under someone else forever or even like like if you're not equal then you kind of are under them yeah it's know? just it's tough and then maybe we can segue off psychopathic after this you know if yeah, for the like people that are listening if they're not fans but the the hard thing in a situation like that is icp gave twisted their names and their face paint and everything. No, yeah. everything twisted. Bala J made that name. No, hundred, hundred. He made I, that I, fucking name. How? Okay, sorry. Go no, ahead. No, no, no. no it's I'm okay. gonna say some shit right after that. I think it's super cornball. Well, I was just. Uh, it's my all, personal thing. But. All I was going to say off that is like yes, because I completely agree with you, and he he made their brand for sure. But the thing is, twisted. It's dope. So dope. They're like, so they, dope. The thing is, they. It would be dope really, without the name or the paint. That's what like, I mean. You know. So it's it's kind of hard when you're when you're trying to be unbiased because I obviously love both of them, right? But it's like, yeah. yeah, Twisted wouldn't have gotten that jump start without ICP. But at the same time, like they got past the baton and they ran with it, right? Like a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people that ICP have tried to kind of almost like recreate Twisted with it. It's not happening because Twisted is act like they can make any song you know like that inspired me it, it, they influenced to step out of, of just rapping that, they i mean you still me rap but just different kind of beats exactly right it's like they they when they Every released movie, like man's myth and mutant in that the was same year it's like, i remember the days list of that. and mutant was just a straight rock album that was so the first high on ecstasy <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not joking sorry keep going but but that's that's why it was so sick right because it's like <laughs> yeah you can you can put them on in the same playlist and one is like the head is rock and then the other is they're, they're spitting straight bars like like straight out of Detroit kind like of thing some, yeah some real rap shit sorry you were you were going to say something though when we were talking about how uh, I think I think I, the, I thought that Twisted was going to remove their face paint and erase themselves for the juggalo world and that doesn't mean Juggalos can't listen to them. And that doesn't mean that they don't totally. like Juggalos. And that doesn't mean that they're... It's just like, ICP made the shit. Yeah. How, like... And I know it's like kind of like a diss and a shove in their face. But like, we're still gonna sell to your fans. Fuck you. But I was like, but you're becoming you... a rock band. You're becoming a rock band. And you're rapping. You've passed the baton. You went way further or just as far as ICP. And still are underground. I, I was like, remove the paint. Start getting, start going outside of the juggalo world. Yeah. Don't just be in the juggalo world because now you're like just this like. And, and they, you they, walk they, away they, from it, but you still want to benefit. You, off you, it. You know, they will benefit off it when they walk away from it, anyways. And they're not necessarily walking away from it. They're just not like this creation that this guy 
that they don't fuck with anymore made. Like to yeah. me that I would have been like, no, pain is gone. I'm not a fucking I'm not like, okay, we're still juggalos, but I just don't wanna be like this fucking lab rat inside this fucking box. And I'm not saying Dark Lotus couldn't ever come back and they can't ever kill the fucking beef and it'd be so sick if they did. Yeah, so but I just feel like they could grow out of the shell. They could get way further. And they are. They actually are in the rock world. They're like, kind of like when Tech 9 was like going on Rock Fest and all these crazy shows, like getting mad respect and he's not really like doing rock and roll. But Twisted more so is actually doing some like hard, heavy, dope shit. It kind of reminds me of like some dope Nickelback, like harder Nickelback. I know it may sound cheesy to people. I like Nickelback. Nick most a lot of people more, more fucking people, hate them, and that's more why I said people that. like Nickelback than you think. They just won't admit it. I will admit it. Yeah, I like those fucking guys. That guy has a hockey rink in his basement. Damn. Okay, Chad anyway. Kroger. How the fuck can you not look up to that shit? Those guys get drunk and play hockey in his basement. <laughs> like that is dope. Like hey, that's pretty dope. So I just feel like it would have been cool to see them go off. And I was like totally imagining them being like, Twisted is not Twisted anymore. There's something else. And it's just going <clears> to <throat> benefit them even more stepping outside instead of just being like altering their face paint and like what they did over the years. They just kept altering their shit to try to like find who they were. And like they even saying that they're just like trying to figure it out with like different methods of like creating their image. And then they finally came up with this thing. But then... If you're always going through a transformation, and especially with this breakup, like, why wouldn't you still transform, like, into something else and be like, yeah, no, like, a, we're still at the Juggalo shows. Juggalo's still coming to our shows. And it's just, we're, we're, not, we're just not trying to cater. We're to not fucking audience. Juggalo rappers anymore. We're like a fucking rock band on the radio, dog. The shit that ICP dreamed of, that would have been the best to rub that in their face. And I'm not in the beef. I don't care about, I don't know those guys. I'm a grown ass man. I love ICP. I love Twisted. I'm not the hugest juggalo anymore because I'm not like into the newest shit. I like the old shit. And I'm just not like, uh, like I was, but they could have surpassed and went and they still could. And I still think the paint and the juggalo name is not totally holding them back. But it kind of is. Yeah. It kind of is. It kind of yeah. puts you in this thing where they're just like, did they? I, uh, I feel like. I and feel now, especially because it's like, oh, didn't you like break up? Or like, people are like, didn't like ICP break up? Because they're like, they all have face paint. People who don't really know, they're like, didn't those guys break up or something? And they're like, no, man. They're fucking never were in a group. They're just yeah. on a record label together. Like, or people think Tech Nine is a group. I've heard so many people be like, Tech Nine, those guys are sick. Yeah. I'm like, well, then that's just me talking. Someone doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about, but just had to rant there for a sec. I just think yeah, that they kind of went out of their box a little bit. Podcasting is go outside of your box a little bit, and then the whole like that's what James Garcia is doing. Don't you think, in a sense, that's what he's doing? And I don't know if he's that's trying to get later. if he's trying to get out of the juggle world. I don't think that's happening necessarily. But he's like, I want to be myself, not this fucking hatchet man. This person with this fucking thing that someone else thought of like fucking 30 years ago. It's not even your idea if it's based off someone else else's shit. Like, it, like, and we could go back to like where you're influenced and you don't really have any like real ideas until you like see shit and you're like, you're like, oh, like, you know, like, you know, you truly get pieces from everything and then that's what creates you. You know, you're not just like the only person in the world originating everything. That's not what it is. Everybody yeah. steals a little piece of something. But it's just like, dude, that's why I put James Garcia. I do put formally no, and it's fucking, but, but I'm just like, dude, I would way rather do a song with James Garcia than Otis. Even though I love Otis and I love Young Wicked, but I'm like, that is who he is. I don't want to do Otis personally, but that's, again, that's just from a fan standpoint. Ex yeah. boys, that's when we got into him. But as him, I have to respect, because even with me, right, it's like I, I go by my, my government. I, I use Kiron in my Which music. is so dope because it's like, that's not influenced. The Crooked G was influenced by the Juggalo shit. Yeah. It was 100% influenced by, like, just what we were in, the little yeah. realm, like you said, the little world of us all wearing the same jerseys and be like, this is cool. I get that. And that's so dope. I like that. But then it's just no originality. Jordan is the first person to ever tell me that he wants to be Jordan Walner as a rapper. He's like, I was fucking irreligious. I was inski. I was the instigator. And then he's like, you know what I'm going to be? Jordan Walner, and it sounded so dumb at the time, <laughs> because everybody's like, 
violent J, Shaggy Doodle, yeah, all this. fucking the, the blue skies or the fu- whatever the fuck their name is. It's kind of cool to like, it almost actually promotes you more. I understand well, some people want to separate and not have a, like actors and shit. Like Brad Pitt, that's not his real fucking name. He like in the end, they, they yeah. all have a fake weird Brad Pitt. Yeah. I'm fucking Doug Stinkhole. You know, like, they, they don't have a real name, and it separates them, but I also feel like for artists and music, you connect to your fans. You're not just playing a facade all the time, acting as someone else. You're writing lyrics that you think about all the time. Yeah. Capital D? That's Dallas. That's not fucking anything else. I'm not, like, fucking capital J. No fucking letters in my name with a J. Like, it's just, like, John. Otis is dope. Young Wick is, Young Wick is dope. Crooked G is dope. But they're, like, super influenced by something else and just to go back to your like roots and be like and then i know i even get where some people were like i don't want my fucking slave government name and i get that too where they're like i don't want to fucking rep that shit i want to be like ice tea whole, i want to be uh, ice tea i don't want to be fucking whatever the fuck um, it is. well like the whole the whole reason i switch <laughs> sorry that was the switch from, yeah i was like i don't know where we're going at the end there um the whole reason I switched from Crooked G to Kieran is because every time that I would do a show, and this is back in the day when I was doing, like I just moved to Calgary, so 2015, and I was still doing shows quite a bit. But every time I'd get off stage, if someone liked the performance, they'd say, you know, what's your name? It's like, oh, Crooked G. They're like, no, 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 what's, what's your name? No. So I, I got to the point, I'm like, I'm just going to go by Kieran. Dude, it's the best I'm, promo. Because when I'm introducing myself, I'm introducing my brand, but I'm introducing me as a person as well. But then it's funny because it switched up when I get off stage and if someone says, you know, what's your name kind of thing, I'm like, oh, Kieran. Like, cool, what's your real name? Like, oh, no, it's Kieran. <laughs> like, what? <Yeah. laughs> Why'd your parents name you that? <laughs> but uh, Just because it's such a unique name, nobody ever heard of it. I knew, used to knew a kid in school named Shaman. Yeah. No, I've never heard that name before that. Or, well, but like, I knew it when I was young, so it was a long time ago, but I mean, it's just not a name I hear every day. It's well, kind of cool. The, the thing about it, too, that people either don't know or forget is my name's actually not English, right? It's, it's actually a different language. What language? Irish. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's why it's spelled so weird. And We've all been to the rainbow. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Hey, that's better, that. that's that was better than I can do <laughs> I just love Conor McGregor so much. Oh, I love Irish people, best. dude. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into it, but I love them. <laughs> fuck. But yeah, fuck, if you guys can see, uh, did, were you done there when I interrupt you again? Got, um, um, I, I no, no I, no, I was just talking about uh, changing the stage name to yeah. better incorporate. And that it's Irish and like different language. language. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. the only reason I mention that is because, again, like, when people see it, they think it's, or, you know, when I used to do shows, and people would think it was just a stage name that I made up, because phonetically, it doesn't make <coughs> sense at all. Like, C-I-A-R-A-N. But then it's a cure. But on. there's fucking silent letters. Yeah, so how the fuck letters, does that make sense? Silent letters and then the fada is yeah, this, this, that gives yeah. it that kind of awesome. There's now, many but, other words that are more... Contradictory or what is it? Uh, where are multiple of your stoner? I haven't been looking at the comments. At one the hour, call. 13 minutes. We got some comments or what? Um, reply to yeah, yeah, yeah. I replied to the first ones. Pretty uh-huh. soon we're going to be listening to people's music. So we will be listening to people's music soon. So keep a lookout for that. For free. All right. So for free, just to get you guys to share and subscribe. Uh, Justin had said back. Back when I don't know the timestamps on these, I, okay. I apologize that I haven't been keeping track. But um, Justin said he would cough a couple peelers if we started selling potato peelers. So oh, sick. got got someone on the list. Okay, we might uh, start Omen selling potatoes too. Then though, <laughs> um, is is Omen coming tomorrow with Invectrum? Is that what he's asking? He said, "Love you, boys. Setups looking sick. Stoked to come see you tomorrow." Okay, so we can talk about that off camera too. I was no, just yeah, like I want Travis to come. But I also want him to be his own podcast too. Like I want to ask him some questions about his music yeah, and yeah. who he is. And... No, that makes sense. And um, uh, Kira, just oh sorry, yeah, no no no, doing the questions. I was just going to say, Chris said, "What do you think about Jelly Roll rolling into the country scene?" Okay, let's let's answer that one first. Yeah, I'll this. I'll go first because I don't 
I know who Jelly Roll is, but I don't listen to him at all, so I don't. <sighs> I'm going to show you a song that's going to make you cry. You're going to be like, I'm a piece of shit. As soon as you listen to him, I am a piece of shit. Music. That's what he's saying is he's a piece of shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, no, I no. relate 100% with it. what he's saying, not, not on the drug side. But the guy just like hit me. I was like, sing so good. Yeah, I don't. Oh, Robbie Deachin had also said show feet, which I think he was just kidding. But I don't know. Well, here's the thing, Robbie. <laughs> I have a foot fetish. Um, I just want to no, let you know. That... Um, no, but it's not a, you know, I don't go out of my way to not listen to Jelly Roll. Like, I've, I've watched, he was on the Theo Vaughn podcast. I really like him so there. good. I like, I, when I hear his music, I, uh, I it's don't good. Just like it. Yeah, yeah it's like just you don't listen to exactly. him regularly. I don't listen to him regularly. Either. I kind of, I kind of thought he was. I mean, I know he rapped and whatnot, but I, I thought he's been country for a while now. Cause I saw a video on Instagram <laughs> of him like pulling up to the CMAs, like a drop top and whatnot. The dude has like insane like crowds. Yeah. Like when I see it, I'm like, holy fuck, that show's huge. Like the ones that James Garcia went on, the little, the not little, the tour that he went on. I was like, jelly. It's like holy fuck. Yeah, no, and, and they're uh, like, homies. And it, well, and he's friends with say like Casty. I'm a huge Casty fan. And then um, Slum American, like they're all kind of Slum American. Yeah, 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 I love Yellow Wolf. Um, so, so again, you know, Slum you, you should even you should even give me or Chris could hit me up too and just give me some suggestions to like how how to ease my way into Jelly Roll. So obviously, as I'm big, going to ease your way in with that song. Well, I was gonna say like, he has a big discography, song. right? So. Yeah. And I don't even remember the name, but I just know that I'm gonna be like. I'm a piece of shit song by. <laughs> he took a platinum at CMAs. That's what Chris said. That's dope. Yeah. So because the dude can belt. Yeah. He can belt his vocals. The older I get, the more I like country music. I don't think I'll ever like it, but I respect it and I don't hate it. Yeah. It's the same thing with like what you're saying when you like. You just like don't really fuck with someone, and you're like. When I was, I honestly like. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody says the same thing about it that doesn't like it, and they say it either makes me sad or annoyed, or the guy is crying about his dead dog. And like, I'm just no. like, it's no, no, I know, but it's the like the go to complaint about country yeah. is what I've heard my whole life. And I'm just like, the only country I've really heard that I liked, John and this Cash. is my own personal thing, I don't think he's country. You don't? No, I wouldn't I say think... he's country. I think he's like fucking like. Cool fucking rock and roll. Yeah, but I, I yeah, yeah. You know, no, maybe that's a bad example. And like the I hurt myself today. He that shit that. is like still my makes me so sad. It didn't write that. He, the guy from Nine Inch Nails wrote that. I don't know his name. And he wrote that before him. No, he, he wrote, wrote it, it. He wrote it. And Johnny Cash sang it. I I may be wrong Shang on that, it. but I'm he Shang Shang it. Shang it. Song Shang. I might be wrong on that, but I'm I'm ninety percent sure the lead singer from Nine Inch Nails. Oh yeah, because I that. think I even seen him say it was like such an honor for him to like redo it because I, I, so like, I think that was I think that was Johnny's last song. I could be wrong. Okay, yeah, I don't like. Um, country is is dope. I don't fuck with it. The only shit I ever heard was like probably Jelly Roll and like uh, Yellow Wolf because they give that like hip hop style. To it. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think it's it's changed so dramatically over the years. Now it's now it's like stadium pop, right? And the, I know we're being there's always a pop that. version of every genre, though. Yeah. That's so true. so you could say, like, there's like, bro, back in the day, rock was like, da, 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 and they're like, dressing in black clothes. Now we're wearing sparkles. That's the pop era. There's always a pop era. It might be at one time, and maybe it's not like, but like each there's pop rap. There's pop, pop, there's pop fucking rock, there's Chris, pop... Like, Chris just made a comment about, like, mixing genres and whatnot and how, how everything, you know, he he does make a good point that, um, like, I, I, th I feel like genres are kind of outgrowing themselves at this point, where, yeah, you can't, you can't even necessarily say, like, rap music, because it's, like, all, all the subgenres of rap, like, there's, like, oh, emo well. pop rap, and, like, synth rap, and hardcore rap, and... You know, boom bap rap and trap rap and yeah. there's so yeah, I mean But then there's like a poppy of, rap too though. Yeah. yeah. Well so so I think it's just all kind of a melting pot at this point. Yeah. But you can like someone who like pays attention can kinda like navigate. Oh yeah, you like, can differentiate for sure. Like I like I can listen to Juice World and I still think I'm listening to rap. But then if I compare that to like listening oh. to Griselda, 
who is also rap, they're vastly different, right? Way different, and uh, Juice World reminds me of like if Blink-182 rap. Have you ever watched his free stuff? Which is dope, I love Blink-182, and I, li- yeah. I, don't, I started to like Juice World, uh, unfortunately, after he died, be- yeah. because of the, well, sorry, wait, what was your question? I was I was just uh, wondering if you had ever seen his freestyles, like he'll freestyle. I did, and I even heard him talk about him. He's just like, uh, yeah. Well, that song they did kind of reminded me of Tory Lanez. Like he was just like really good at it. Oh, yeah. he I thought Tory Lanez was pretty good, but uh, Tory Lanez is super But what's good. his name? Uh, Juice World like had like the style that I see at parties where like the people are like really good at drum freestyle and they just like freestyle for like an hour. <laughs> but his his stuff was so when he was doing it, it was like so impressive, cohesive then. Um, yeah, I had, I sh- shout out my friend Josh, I had the opportunity to see Juice World live before he passed away, and I really got into him, and then he unfortunately died soon after that, but even seeing him live, he sounded exactly like his music, and I always respect an artist when, one, when they're not singing over their backtrack every single song, like if you, if you, if you, if you, if you I do almost... Nowadays. The whole song, almost nowadays, the yeah. The whole song. I'll tell you why after, but uh, you tell me what you have to say, and I'll tell you why. No, I was, I was just saying it was, it was nice to see him live before he, before he passed. But like, and like, but you're saying the things, the aspects that you don't like. You're saying whether they sing over the song and. Well, yeah, he just, he just sounds like it's like going to, it's like. Or is that just the one thing you're okay? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I have multiple re- I have about three big. Sorry, you talk. I'm going to take my jacket off. Yeah, of course. I have about three main reasons why I go over the track, and because I've done about like four hundred shows, went across the world, went to Germany, Tom McDowell, Cool Keith, forty shows, Snack the Ripper, my own, my three of my own mini tours into U.S. and back, my on my own. And then that one with Block McCloud, I've done mad fucking shows. And every single show I go to, it's a piss poor bar. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, a small place okay. and we I don't have the greatest sound. That. Yeah. Okay, and I lose my voice in two seconds. I have this high pitched voice where I'm like, if I sit here and even rehearse for 15 minutes, like, I know that you have to work your fucking voice box out like a muscle and I haven't gotten to that level where I'm like 15 minutes every day of loud yelling because that's literally what you'd have to do is like working out in a gym and actually be doing it all the time and I'm always rapping and shit but I'm not like out loud rehearsing through speakers so yeah it is, there, it is different reason number one shitty speakers don't have a sound guy maybe not even shitty speakers maybe just don't have a sound guy maybe And you're out of place and the mic's not working and you lose your voice by the time they fucking turn the volume on. Like, there's just been many times where the show is lackluster because I have an ego and I don't want to be like, go up there. Dude, at the start of my performances, I only had some of the dubs 20%ed in if I didn't have AM with me and the hooks 50% in even. I didn't even have them full on. Now I go hooks full versus full depending on the situation because if we don't have a sound man we don't have people who really care about your sound or they only care about the headliner sound and then another reason is i don't have a headset and i don't have my sound guy every professional who comes in has a fucking sound guy they do a proper sound check there's just like so much steps to it and then the the third final thing is that or no, it was like, I lose my voice, you don't, you're not unsure of the sound, and that I don't have this equipment to rehearse on, to where I'm like, feel fully confident that it's going to be a perfect performance, because let's make it clear, like, people who go up, like, that have immaculate performances on stages, there's a huge production behind it, and it doesn't, it's not just yourself. Yeah. And if there's no huge production, and I'm doing 30 shows in 30 days, and my voice is gone on the third day... Or even I'm just doing one show and I just want to fucking make it loud and the best I can because they're only doing sound checks for the headliner. They only are going to turn the volume up for the headliner every single show I've ever been to. I'm like looking up the sound guys like turn the bass up. Like turn the bass up right now because all I can hear is my fucking voice. And I'm just like can feel it in my body and the stage and everything that it's like it's just like <sighs> more than like the equalizing trebles, out the, the, the actual over, right? fucking sound. Yeah and I'm like okay so... I 
trust me, at the point where I have my own speakers that I either bring to the venue that I perform on with a sound guy, or we talk and negotiate with the sound guy, and we can do a sound check and we can figure it out, and I do layer it and figure it out, and there's parts where you're out of energy, so you got some vocals. I totally understand how keeping your energy throughout the whole set without being like gassed at the end is so important, and I understand layers and shit, you're singing with the vocals, sing, you got some people on stage, they might not need them. It's just different in every situation. And so if I'm going to the same situation almost every time, I'm just gonna win. I'm gonna win and my shit still sounds amazing because I'm not fucking lip syncing. I'm fucking still gasping over top of all of these. You know, I just decide how far I'm holding the mic away from my mouth because whether or not it's like capping or like, or topping out. So. But my end goal is to be like, there are no vocals except for the hook. And it may be a hype man. Cause I just want, I can do it. The best, my best rapping ability is being like, just straight up acapella craziness. Like just doing my best verses, like fast in front of people, like maybe a little gram of mushrooms or something crazy, a little bit of beer. Like just immaculately spitting the best I can. And so I know that I can do that through a microphone with speakers, it makes me louder. But Bro, when you got a fucking long set and a bunch of shows, people who don't fucking care, like I said, it all just adds up to me being like, I'm just gonna cover myself on the back end. And those guys were like, oh, like totally like gassing themselves. I'm just not down with that. And I'm just gonna be like prepared. And until then, like Tony Ayo, dude, what I told you about what's already going on and shit, I'm not getting a sound check. And it, maybe I will, but it's not like, I don't know, man. Like, I want to get a sound check with someone and be like, have two sets ready. One with no vocals and the hooks and everything all out. And then one, I'm going to like hit them both up on the set and be like, okay, this one sounds way better. It sounds better for me to drop out here and just be like, go from having vocals to be like crazy long verse with just me, acapella or over the beat or however it's mixed in. But I'm just taking it by day. Like, I went from recording music on my own to thinking I couldn't do it and then realizing that. I know that I can. And I was like, so it's just stages of growing. Like people look at me and judge me from one show from I, last show, get all, all, all vocals, full songs blast just over top of it. I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to try and make it sound the best I can. People don't like it. They can suck my dick. They haven't done 400 shows and been gasped after three or even just one fucking five minutes into a 15 minute set of going, you better remember the better, better. Like that shit is not fucking easy, man. It is not fucking easy. And I don't rehearse properly. Like all these professionals, dude, they have a fucking, dude, they can rehearse with fucking real sound engineers. That's fucking crazy dog. Like that's what I'm saying. What do I rehearse? Just, you know, like, I'm just saying like, once I start getting the equipment, I, I won't be talking shit then. I'll be like, I have the speakers in my fucking setup. I can do it. I've already practiced it. I ran the treadmill. I know I can do the fucking, uh, like metaphorically, I mean, like when you work out and you did the time, you know, you can do it back in the days when I did them all the time is cause I had the speakers in the basement at the pinky. Me and Shane were like in sync and we did not have any song played out. And I'd already proved to myself that I could do it. It's just over time. Like, I was in control of those speakers. I was fucking right then and there. I was just like, loud as we want in one fucking room you know so it's like it's big on me and that's why i have long, such a long answer is because i'm just like no, like dead straight up like, like a couple beers flowing through me right now yeah, yeah. but but i'm telling you right now i feel like my ego is like really hurt when i admit that i rap over a song because in the rap world they're like yo the best people have like nothing and i i totally get it but i'm Can't once i'm like at my like your, level of like I'm, I'm building up to that level. That's all I want to say is I'm working up to that. I know. I just when, you, when you, when you say, so, okay, two things. One, um, I don't care if you're basement dweller level or if you're like Dr. Dre production level, just personal preference for me, any live show I've ever been to, I don't like when people sing on backtracking. Like I'd rather hear their single voice in shitty acoustics than hear the backtrack. That's just yeah. me personally, yeah. first of all. Second okay. of all, to your point, you still do see some of these artists, like say the Migos and whatnot, they do have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of, you know, stage equipment, 
they they probably performed that set for a week before they did it in that stadium, everything, and they still go choose. over the backtrack. They still that's, choose to oh, go over the backtrack. Thank you. Okay, so then it's like that's a whack. Uh, it's, it's a, a pool, story. It's story if the mic's no, nope, nope. that's whack. No, it's it's doing good. It's still okay. So that's a boiling pot of whether or not what works for you. And I've seen yeah. people be like, I've even seen, I've I've seen people say, I'm not gonna say who because I'm not like that. Say. To someone that they don't have the backtrack when everybody knows they do. They're like lying and saying oh, that they yeah. did. So there's, See, that's so there's people, totally, oh, I'm just saying. And then there's people who like layer it and have a little bit of it and then don't have anything at all. Or they just have the hooks. And I just feel like whatever works for you is go. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not done yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not where I want to be yet. So what I wanted to be was never over the track. Ever. Yeah, yeah. It was never like yeah, that. And I'm, I hate that shit. My, that. Especially because of our voices. They travel and are so like... I honestly believe we have like the best voice for not having a backtrack. I was just thinking about that the, the other day. I was like, it just travels and it's loud. And when we rap fast, people can hear our words. Um, enunciation as well. Enunciation. Like, every, like every syllable. Yeah. Um, shout out to us. Shout out to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Yeah, and I, it's weird because I hate my voice on tape and film, and I always hated seeing myself on film, and I always hated hearing my voice because he's like, like Camera Lee, that's literally what I heard all the time. <laughs> and, I, and when I listen to it after, I'm just like, yeah, sound like a wrong. fucking woman. So told me it sounds business. like Eternia. Someone sounded like selling Eternia. I listened to her shit, and I was like, she's a better rapper than me too. Who? <laughs> and no, she's dope rapper. She did a track with uh, self-titled what, Eternia. What's she's a girl Eternia? and she sounds like me, Eternia. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's her. That's the name. But uh, and I was like, yeah, super she dope. She sounds like you stylistically or vocally. Sounds vocally, like, you. Oh, like okay. almost identically. And I was like, really? yeah, this one song I listened to, and I was like, oh my god, fuck. But but that's my insecurity with my voice. But it is the thing that is making me better. So it's like I like. There's like a veil where I'm like on the one side, like hating it, but then I'm like working with it, making the music and it's actually benefiting me because in the end, like I am going to like hundred percent, like I'm going to have the sickest set, man, when it comes time when I'm ready and I'm not ready now. I don't want someone to call me tomorrow. I think I could live up to it if I had someone call me tomorrow, like, yo, let's like millionaire status, like let's, we're signing you. I think I could step up to the plate, but I almost want to be just a little bit more ready. Before yeah. I wanted it, before I deserved it. And now I'm like, I want to deserve it and be like, I don't even need it now. And like, I'm just like, certified. Yeah. Because I'm just like, don't have the backtrack. Got my own speakers, my own sound guy. We, own yeah, shit we can, we, Just everything. Though. We can let go of the backtrack thing. Oh no. I, I, if I like hit a nerve. I, no, no. 100% <laughs> hit a nerve. Yeah, I'm because sorry. Because I am fucking like... I love the thing live is, I, performing. I know, and it just, it, the it, thing is, though, like, I, I've, right seen, now, I've seen you perform for over 10 years. I know that you don't need a backtrack. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Some people, oh, my God. Thank you. Tom yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that went without question. I, I don't think you need it. I didn't think you all. said that, that, that you, like, implied that. Yeah. I just, my, it's my insecurity. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to, like, go off. All good. All good. Oh, my God. So how how long have we been going now? We still have two viewers. I mean, maybe one of them is me on my phone. I have no idea. I think one of them would be you, but there's yeah. certainly a lot of people hey. to view it after. All and, good. Uh, we're at one thirty three, and it's ten twenty two. I say we go till eleven. Chris said uh, he's outie for the night, but yeah, thanks for watching. That was dope. Word. Um. Sorry, go till eleven. So and I yeah, we'll go till eleven. So about thirty eight more minutes. Um. What was I going to say? That I think we'll do, we should do scheduled lives like this, and then I'm going to edit the clips and re-release the full interview and the full chat on YouTube with a bunch of clickbait like clips. And then... Um, yeah, you got to get on but, your like, shorts game and like, make a TikTok and whatnot. Yes. Um, but I was just going to say that I almost want to start like events on like start the start events so people know when they're happening but then have ones that are like unreleased that weren't live that are like getting yeah. released because like not all of them are going to be like a live broadcast they're just going to be like released as a pod right 
No, I noticed some of the people will have them go live and then some will be like pre-recorded and edited or whatever. So I want to have both. I want to be like, we have the raw uncut shit and then we also just have like edited versions. And, and the ones that were raw and uncut, they will still be cut up and re-released. I'd almost, I'd almost set up a recurring schedule for recorded, somewhat edited ones and then sneak the lives in there. <clears throat> as 100%. Bonus, bonus. Exactly. 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 So people that do tune in to watch it they're they're expecting say the friday one but then randomly they open their phone on a wednesday night and oh there's there's cap and a couple of his homies right i think that would be sweet yeah dude uh so yeah if you guys are watching this um go check out uh Caron's last song that was entitled chris brown chris brown on all digital platforms soundcloud yeah you got you can check it out on youtube for free if you want to scam it out and take the url do it Preferably pay, but free promo is good promo. Yeah, you know. I tell all my fans, it sucks to have your shit on SoundCloud and YouTube if you're not getting paid because everybody can just steal the shit. It's true. It's whatever, but good promo. Like, promo is good promo. Any promo is good promo. Um, my latest song is It's Cap D. I was actually thinking about changing my name to Cap D. Yeah. Like, honestly. Because everybody thinks my name looks like Chipotle. I don't. I'm not even joking, man. I don't think that at all. I'm not saying people don't think or, that. Or, I don't think that at all. I think that is a Spanish word for something. I, I don't no, know. no, the way it's spelled, and then I didn't like. I didn't even look into. It, didn't even think anything of it. I saw two people with the name capital D. They both have A L or O L, and I was like, I'm gonna throw the E on it. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm thinking because it's kind of confusing to spell because people either spell it those two ways and they can never find my music just c-a-p-d and i'm actually changing it like when you search my shit it's cap d yeah. i don't know it's, it's, never, like, it's never bad to do i mean i was going to say to do a rebrand that's that's a partial partial rebrand but like not to do it no like it, it never hurts i mean again i i changed mine i was i was just thinking about changing it again the other day oh to what I, i'm not gonna say it on here but i um I'm not going to. Because it's not ready yet and you don't know if you're going to use it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it, but yeah. Just because. I wouldn't, man. I like you on it. I think that's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, had, I had a conversation with my girlfriend about and it. And I still just like, feel like Crooked G was still Kieran. Yeah. I, like, and not because it starts with a C. Maybe that just fucks with my head, but I'm just like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have changed it, but it just still reminded me of Kieran. Just like Young D, Kieran, Crooked G, well, that's Capital thing, D, like, you know, like we all kind of still kept our name in a sense. And, and like and the, the, the OG stuff. homies still call me Crook and whatnot, right? Like oh, you I agree. to me as Crook. I never will stop. Dane does, like, yeah, yeah, so. I just feel like you should have kept it just to get a crook and ca- Crooks and Castles yeah, on saying, like, yo, it's Crooked G and the Crook. <laughs> no, I'm I just love Crooks and Castles. Yeah, oh, no. The guys, uh, what was I going to say? Who is, do you ever hear Ben Baller? Do you like LRG? He was like best friends with the owner. Nico. Oh, Nico. Yeah, he passed away. Yeah. Yeah, Ben Baller. I, I, it reminds me of, Crooks reminds me of LRG. When I think of it, I like LRG way more than Crooks, but I got into Crooks because of Daner, kind of, yeah. I think. And, uh, I think that, um. Crooks exploded in Red Deer when Boat House opened. Yeah, yeah, but it also, there's a lot of LRG in there before that, or, yeah, yeah. or about the same time, and I went in there just to get the fucking LRG shit. I like, just remember Chris wearing Crooks yeah. before anyone, like, I didn't even know what it was, I used to steal his, his tees and wear them to school and whatnot, and like, no one knew what it was, I don't even know how he found it, it came out in 2002, I think. Well, he's pretty plugged into the scene. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Um, oh yeah, and fucking also, if you guys have seen on the camera here, I don't mean to go off, we got some Capital D merchandise, uh, we're gonna have some skateboards, skateboards at the show, January 29th, come check it out, Capital Kush, gonna be performing, uh, the song Capital Kush, uh, some tracks off Dallas Wonderland, tracks off, uh, not fucking Capital Claps, oh my god, I hate that album. <laughs> I wish I never made it, to be honest, not because it didn't do well for me, and I, like, it was great, I loved it, the experiences were awesome, but I just wished I'd never released a song until I was, like, right now, because now I'm, like, half decent, 
and I wouldn't want to release something when I left to look back. I like to see the growth, but I I don't like listening to cringe worthy music of myself. I really hate it. And to me that album was cringe. I really only have a couple verses on there. I really think they're like worthy still now kind of just listening. But um yeah, I'm not gonna perform lots of my old shit is my point. And uh, I will always like promote that stuff and the fans asked for it when I was on tour of snack and shit and someone asked me to do RIP. I didn't even practice it and I did it horrible, but whatever. Yeah. I'll do it. If you want me to, I'll try my best to do it. But I just want to do my best new shit. But yeah, we got merch, fucking skateboards, hoodies, capital Kush, fucking fully sublimated fucking shits. Bag of weed. Come on, dog. Is it for that ain't gangster? Kieran's gonna have some merch soon. Fucking True Ability's got merch. The site's down right now, but you can contact Travis Elwood personally. He'll drop ship some shit out to you. Contact me personally. We don't have a website currently right now. It's down, but message us personally. We can always get shit made up. I want things on me now, on hand, on my person, just because it's better for shipping it out. Just like having the quality, seeing what it is. I've had a couple things happen where things weren't what I thought they were because they were drop shipped that I never yeah, had. You always have to order first. like mass production and then there's, there's Or no, I'm saying like if a fan will buy something, one thing, and I never had seen it before, and then they're like, What the fuck is this? Complain oh, about a thing. Yeah. But I can yeah, kind of like look at something now. Or something. No, like a hoodie was just like way like thinner than it was supposed to be, or the print was wrong, or there's just like um this is like, I can confidently send it out and be like, there's nothing like you that. I think that they caught it. Yeah, you snap it. Yeah, and then that's what the whole tag thing is too, is now once I have it, the first step is having it. And the second step is like getting it printed and stitched and having your own fucking tag. Because that's why I get these. Hold on a second. Put the mic down. That's why I have these, bro. Oh, they just like, rip right off. They yeah, rip, yeah. they rip off. If you guys are, um gonna start a business check out gildan removable tags because they're canadian as well yeah they're canadian and um this isn't a sponsor it's our first <laughs> podcast we're just fucking around drinking beers um they have removable uh removable tags now they still have a print on the back in some of them but if you remove the tag you can put it on it's custom even if you take it off it looks custom so you don't have to add anything onto it it's pretty cool it's pretty freaking yeah, cool my orange is looking good dude try to make it to the show do you skate the decks? Are they buddies? Capability. This board? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I skated two of these and snapped two of these. I snapped one on purpose. And the only thing you really have to look at is whether it's seven plies, right? Do you know that? No. Okay, listen to this. Okay, I'm still worthy. It hadn't changed. So back in the day, when you buy a Nash skateboard from Canadian Tire or Walmart and it had a gargoyle on the bottom of it or Star Wars or whatever fucking cartoon you're watching that week on the skateboard that had nothing to do with skateboarding and they're just trying to fucking capitalize off of selling a board, it would have nine plies. Nine? Nine oh. thick plies and not be rounded. It's like they cut the fucking skateboard out of wood and then didn't round the sides because it was like square. Oh, so yeah, like, Nash. Back, like back in the day when, so then when Pine had those like ultra light boards and whatnot, were those five plies? Like is seven the standard? Seven, I think is the standard. And then I heard. Because they those boards would snap easy, but there, you could get so much kind of air time. Okay, well, them. okay, that's different. Like I just want to say something quick about the Nash is that the Nash was not like the standard of like everyday real skateboarders. Nash was like a kid who their parents couldn't afford a skateboard or something like that. Or it was like the kid's first sample board before they got into skateboarding. It's like, if you're going to go like play hockey, you like had a shitty hockey stick first before you had like the yeah. pimp Easton. And you're yeah, like, yeah. this like hollow and you're like fucking around with it. That's the Easton is like the seven ply or nine ply or five ply. Whatever ply that was, standard seven. Nine usually because they're like, Still about the same size, but they're like thinner and it's just stronger, I think. I don't think it was bigger at all. You don't quote me on that. So 
it, within the skate world, you still have different plies, and the five would probably be off weight, because I don't think a five would be bragging about or promoting or marketing strength. I think the nine, yeah, no, nine, nine, nine so yeah, like weight, just like they do. It's like, it's like when you used to have the super light, it could be MX. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. That frame or the was, trucks, like the new trucks are like hollow now. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, yeah, whatever they they just have uh, average seven, non-breaking nine, and then, they, and then the five would probably be a light thing, and then they do so they just do lots of different things with boards. But I just stoked that I remember that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's fucking so cool, man. And honestly, because I there's a skateboard um, screen printer. We have 15 minutes left. Hold on, I'm just gonna quickly say this, and we'll hit, yeah, talk about something else. There's a skateboard screen printer for about four hundred dollars, where you can screen print the pictures on the board. So I could either just like I could buy a shitload of blanks for probably like twenty bucks if I bought a lot, because I pay a lot of fucking money for these. I don't make like any money off these skateboards, because um, I only buy three. But there's this other thing that you can buy too. That's a press, and then you can just buy sheets. And then you just buy glue. All it is is that white wood glue. Mm -hmm. And they have like nut seven sheets and they put it out and then they fucking press it down. And it just sits there and squeezes all the glue out like you're squeezing fucking resin out of a fucking THC packet. So sexy. And uh, board just gets crimped in and the fucking mold to the piece that you have is what the mold you either bought or you made to what board you're pressing. And you, I could press a fucking board right in here and screen print it. And I was like... When I saw that, I was like, it was like two, to have a nice setup, it would be like $5,000, and I'd like, just be printing boards right in here, and pressing them, yeah. just gluing them up, and I was like, so, I was thinking about that, because like, eventually I'm going to want to screen print my own t-shirts, and I just think it'd be cool to be like, I fucking screen printed all of these, and every shirt's going to be different, and very limited, you know, there's only a hundred of these t-shirts. I stayed up for the last five days, like, doing these myself type thing. And I just think, like, what Tony Hawk and Steve would have with the boards and shit. Like, we just signed 500 of these. Yeah. Fucking wrist is broken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Off the boards. Is there anything else you want to touch up on? Like, anything you think of? Like, hip-hop news, fucking what's going on in your life? Uh, anything. I don't want to really make... I don't want to end it with my... <laughs> Rambling shenanigans. Were there skateboard talks? I love skateboarding though. No, me too, man. Um, no, I mean, just going back to I need to make it a big year for musical releases. And I'm hyped yes. that you're. I'm hyped that you're doing the whole podcast thing. Still to be a, a part of it. Um, yeah. I don't know how how long have we have we been going for. We're at one forty seven. We're gonna go for. We could always, sure. we could always, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no one in here right now, but we could always cut it short and just discuss. Oh, 100%. You know, just, I, I wouldn't mind kicking it with you a bit oh, oh, before. Yeah. Oh, like, what do you mean? Like, after we're off the line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll hang out, dude. 100%, dude. Yeah, we don't have to just leave after. I still have to take this shit down, and we'll hang in right when you can check out the beach or something. Oh, I'm totally down there. But I would like to do that live sometime, too, is, like, if we... Or Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez used to do that. Make songs? Because he'd like make a song oh. online. I'd be so down. And so, so down. it's kind of like, I'm scared to show people my process because I like mumble a lot of sounds before I actually make words when I rap. I'm like, Almost uh, like does that. yeah, I know you're like, uh, yo, the couch is brown. And I'm like, the couch. And some people just like, a, a lot of artists, <laughs> like, Sounded out. I literally sounded out with, well, and then your vocabulary like fills it in. With our, with our I was gonna say like a majority of mainstream rappers like go into the booth and they just mumble, and catch the like the melody and the flow and the cadence, and then go and fill it in. What? That is so you didn't, weird, you Jimmy. Didn't know this? Okay, so I very that's weird. And I know a lot of people go in and they rewrite their shit like a hundred times. And I don't even really rewrite my shit. If I do, it's probably one time. And that's why sometimes I have kind of lackluster verses, I think, because I'm just taking the first thing I get that comes to my mind that I think is like manageable mm -hmm. when I could like really sit down and take longer. But sometimes it takes me a long fucking time. And sometimes it's super yeah. easy. 
But then, like, but then I think the songs that are super easy can be either lackluster or as good. I remember some people saying, like, uh, um, Saint Priscilla, he's like, that song that we made, the biggest song we ever made in our life was, like, one I hated, and it was just, like, easy to make. Or, like, something. in the membrane or something? Yeah, or jump or jump around. No, that's that different. Uh, that's uh, different groups. House so, of, yeah, house of pain. Yeah, everlast. Sorry about that. Um, I'm a light guy, and I had a couple light years, so I'm kind of light years. But uh, yeah, no, and it, like so, I just back and forth on like how the process is of writing. I think though, especially if you are conscious of the fact that there is a camera on you. The thing is, you can't, mm. I don't care what anyone says. You, you can't be your, you can't be yourself. Yeah, natural. So you're, you're going to, you're going to switch it up a little bit if there is a camera watching you with the process, right? Like there, yes. there are certain things you're not going to do because you know about however many people are. I'm not going to get naked and fucking jerk <laughs> off right in front of the camera unless it's on OnlyFans, right? I will not rely on you. <laughs> but, um, 100%. Man, this is good, man. I fucking had a great time. I, it was, like, really stressful setting it all up because we I hadn't done it with somebody else. I had just been doing, like, little test runs, and these cameras are based off Wi-Fi connection, and I don't have the greatest Wi-Fi, but you can set the settings so they're kind of on the lowest uh, working quality of, like, picture and, like, connection and whatnot, and I think even one of them... I don't know, just it, all in all, it's actually working out pretty sick. We only have two of the spotlights up. Once I get the other stands, we'll be able to have one big other spotlight, Come, like right here, over, coming yeah. down over, because it's just like casting shadows, and then those ones wouldn't be here. Because that's the first thing I started studying, was like, questions they ask people. I went to all the podcasts, like fucking YouTube channels, like, it, the do's and don'ts, and then I was like, all the equipment, like, what do they have? I didn't go crazy, I didn't buy $1,500 cameras, but still these, these, these will do. Yeah, totally. Yeah, man, but yeah, fucking check out Kieran's music. Uh, he's going to be releasing music real soon. He's also working on music with uh, his homie, my homie, uh, Immaculate King. We just did a song, Unheard, featuring Block McLeod himself. I've got, with yours truly. I've got some music coming out with uh, a guy named Lil Wolf. Lil Wolf? Lil Wolf, yeah, he's super, super dope. Check him out if you can. It's Wolf with an E on the end. Um, and then another guy named Two Days have... We're working on a couple things right now, too, so... That reminds me of Dane's name. Two Days? Two Danes. Two Danes, yeah, yeah. Because oh, yeah, I forgot Two Chains, because he loves Two Chains. Yeah, and Two Danes. And because yeah. he had Two Great Danes. Yeah, I forgot. Yo! I was like, I love Great Dane, and I love Young D, but two Danes? And if he had, like, two Danes, he could even have, like, a picture on the front album. I've made a logo for him. I'm trying to get him back, like, every time, like, I will, trust me, man. His kid's gonna be 18 years old, and Dane's gonna be, like, rapid. I'm okay. telling you right now. I just, I, I just mixed a song for him. Yeah, he still is, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Still, I'm saying, like... But not actually, working, yeah, not working, yeah. rapidly. I know what you but mean. Uh, it'd be sick if, uh, just because I always think of like cool artwork or what I think is cool is if he had like, if he was on the cover and he had two Danes, but the one chain was to like a ghost dog and then the other chain was to his new dog. Because yeah. my little brother, uh, rest in peace, Yayo, um, she passed away and he loved that fucking dog and it was around, it was like really hard time when our mom passed and stuff and he got a new Great Dane, and his name's Hugo, and they're just amazing animals, and uh, they're just so loving and just floppy and huge and wreck shit, and they don't even mean to, and they're fucking awesome animals, but we miss Yeo, and that fucking name is just like, it resonates so with Instagram, me. Right? I think so, yeah, and it just resonates with me. Like, it's like, sorry, we're just putting you know? Dane's Instagram out there. Yeah, Follow go them. check out Two Danes. Two Danes. No, 100%. But you, you probably won't. He spells it like Two Chains. I no, think, but a little bit different. But there. the I, though. No, no he two just Chains has an I. Okay, I thought he did it like no, that. He adds the E. Oh, I thought he did. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, like, honestly, we started rapping when we were young. It's like I rap, my cousin raps, my little brother raps, our older brother, my older brother raps, our friend Brian raps, and then, like, 
our other friend Lauren raps, and then like Shane raps, and then his younger brother Ali B raps, and we were all in the same basement at the same fucking time. Bobby C rapped too. Yeah. Even yeah. Brute Dog McDougal. had a little verse. McDougal. <laughs> McDougal. Oh, 100% dudes. Fuck, I can't believe I didn't say that. That was rude. Locus, I'm sorry. Locus is his rap name. Yeah. He's on the track I just did with James Garcia. Uh, everybody good. Could you pass this skateboard right here? It's actually a song that I made and I turned it into a skateboard. And this is a one of one skateboard. It's a song I made with this guy we're talking about right now. His name is Locus. And the dude stutters and doesn't stutter when he smokes weed or raps. It's fucking crazy, man. He has like a speech impediment, but he never has it in his rhymes. It's just like he's a laser focus. When he's high, he yeah, just be high. I always thought that right? was cool about right? And we, I made a skateboard in honor of that. I'll be selling it at the show. Go uh, stream that song, Everybody Good. There's a music video for it on YouTube. Check it out. You come buy this board. It's 100 bucks. I make pennies on it. Literally, pennies on this board, and it's one of one. There's no more of those boards. There's only one of them. I'll sign it for you. Come take a pic in front of the... Capital D banner will have the January 24th the Tony Ayo show tickets, 35 bucks. Uh, I love you guys. We got five more minutes here, man. Uh, I kind of want to, when I go visit your mom, I kind of wanted to go visit her at the same place. Mom used to eat dinner with her at it's that, that little like restaurant that has like the glass front. It's like oh, yeah, it's, around the corner changed. from Fast Gas. I figured it would. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Not like Mountain View? I don't know, but it was like... They used to go to Club Cafe. It was like you could have drove to Auntie Jackie's. It was like on the way to the White Rock, but the way before the White Rock. Yeah. I you know the White I Rock. think you're thinking about Mountain View. Yeah. But I miss that place because we'd always go out there before... Um, we went to the farm or whatever, the rent movies in Israel. And a lot of the times we'd come out and visit and go... I think Friday, some Fridays we'd go eat in there. Miss those days, man. Definitely. Yeah, I was like, and it's weird because in that time I think of it and I was like, I would just wish I was had the mindset I have now where I'm like, would regret not being grateful for how awesome they were. They were fun at the time, but I wasn't like, I was probably just a little shit out. Kind of just wanted to go home, right? Yeah. No, not that. I'm saying, uh, not, not that. I mean, like, all the times, like, just that, that era of oh, my like, life was just like <laughs> so dope. You know, like being on the farm, quad and blazing, like just having, like, I had a little shit. I stole weed from Ken. I stole weed from Uncle Danny. I stole weed all the time. We always had bud. We were always partying. We were always like little shitheads. And it was just an awesome time. Like it was honestly an awesome time. If I could sit here and we could sit down with Stephen Dunbar when he smashed the tree off the side of the fucking, pushing a tree over, catapults off the side of a fucking barbed wire fence smashes his face, his whole lip flies off, or when I broke Lauren's femur, or when I broke my elbow, fucking getting smashed out, like, dude, the time the tornado came through and everybody left their tent, and there's 20 tents, and they're all like, we don't, we don't want our tents or blankets, and my mom's like, go clean up all those tents, and there's like, I was gonna say 50, but literally, like, probably about 20 tents, like, just fucking littered, and the only thing they came back for the keg. The keg that they that they hid. Okay, I think this is like Henry and uh, um, Michelle Newton, maybe, because I think they bought the keg this one time at a party, and that they, it was so funny, I was like so fucking smashed on ecstasy the next morning, and I was going to find the keg. And when I went out to go look for the keg, I was walking through mud with my bare feet in my pasture, like no. cleaning up the tents, and then I was like grabbing the keg or looking for the keg, and a truck came out and got it. Like it was the exact same time I was out there trying to grab the keg. I was just like going to grab it, and they came out and got it. I was like, I was just about to drink this bitch with no button cap, just high as fuck trying to carry this keg back. No, straight up, man. Good times at the farm. I miss, I miss being young. If you're young and you're 15, like 16, 17, 18, you're still at your parents, man, make it last. Make it last as long as you can if you're okay with that, you know, like, and they're okay with that. I'm, I miss my parents, man. I miss being young. I miss, like, 
you know, so rest in peace, pops, rest in peace, moms, rest in peace, you know, like this is the pyramid podcast, you know, we're, uh, a lot of the time we're going to have Kieran the show, um, Skylar's going to be on the show, Skylar Durden, I think uh, tomorrow we're getting Vectrum, possibly Travis, maybe, maybe Kieran wants to join that one again, I don't know, we can figure it's, something out. If it's not, yeah, just an <clears throat> individual one. Down yeah, I wanted to do it like that, but then who knows? Maybe the more the merrier. I don't give a fuck, really. Like, I just kind of want to be consistent and keep them going. So, yeah. But yeah, love you guys. Where are we at? We're at, we're at one fifty nine yet for fifteen seconds. Oh, you just you want it that two? No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. I just want to say what's up. Uh, go check out Kieran's last song. Thank you, Chris Brown. Check it out. Love you guys. Peace.